There you go. Get that down, you. Yeah. Ooh, never again. <laughs> Don't say that. Oh. You never know. In another thousand years, you might be in the mood again. Oh. New year, new century, new millennium. What better time to make a fresh start, eh? Keep that in mind. You and me, our marriage. Looking back, I realise I haven't been very easy to live with over this past year. But, um, can we put it behind us and forget it? Start again? I know we can be happy. You will never guess what's happened. The Rovers only got broke into last night. Middle of the night, these two fellas. Except they didn't get anything because Leanne disturbed them and they beat her up. You're joking. No, and they gave her a right bashing. She's in hospital. Oh, poor Leanne. Well, I know we've had our fallouts, but I wouldn't wish this on her. There'll be another cafe opening up next door. And to cap it all, he's forgotten to order the bread, so I've got to go in first thing tomorrow and do that. Anyway, how was your day? Did you see Rebecca? Oh, uh, yeah. How yeah. was her millennium? All right, I think. How are things with her and her husband? Oh, uh, I split up. For good? Well, where's she living? Oh, I'm not sure. I think she's got a room down the um, nurse's home. Well, that's good. Hmm. Best place for her. Give her a chance to start again. She's a nice girl. She'll soon find somebody else. Yeah, another drink. Well, I mean, Linda would be full of anything, wouldn't she, if she thought she was doing somebody else down and making herself look special? It would have been nice if it had come from Mike, though. Oh, well, I think he was planning on making the effort, but he just didn't quite get there. But that was part of the course, I'm afraid. Anyway, whatever he does now, it's got nothing to do with me. However stupid. Mm, and I think we're talking stupid. Oh, I mean, I could say what I like, but it wouldn't have any effect. I tell you what it will have an effect on. His bank balance. Oh, yeah, well, that's his problem, isn't it? We put a flashy young girl on an older fella's arm and sends goes out the window. D do you mind? Mm -hmm. Can we go bowling this afternoon? Yeah! Who's paying? You are. I've not even paid for Christmas yet, and the bills have just started coming in, so no. Go for a drive instead or oh, something. that's boring. You always go bowling in the Simpsons. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we don't live in cartoon land, do we? And anyway, it's four times cheaper in America, like everything else. Well, we could just go for one game, couldn't we? Yeah, and then we want another, and then an ice cream. Prices in that place would be 30 quid before we know it, just for an hour's entertainment. Your dad's right. It is expensive. Yeah, but I, I just want us to do something nice. You know, we never do anything together anymore. Well, why don't we go ice skating, then? Yeah. Well, it's half the price. You can stay as long as you like. <laughs> Great. OK, we'll do that, shall we? How do you know it's cheaper in America? Because I used to be the President of the United States. No, you didn't. Go with me alone? Yeah. Right. Ah. <laughs> Go on, get ready for it. Oh, I don't know. It's nice to get it right occasionally, isn't it? Very. But it's for Dean material. All right. So I fell over once or twice. Woohoo! Fifteen, according to Dave. Yeah, well, you weren't exactly twinkle toes yourself. I never said I could skate. Well, at least the kids had a good day. That's the main thing. And Sarah Louise had a smile on her face for once. Yeah, and we enjoyed ourselves, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, it was great. Right, we'll do it again. A uh, pint and a white wine, please. Yeah. Look, uh, Dad, we're going to get going. I just ordered eight breakfasts. There are only four of them. They're off the building site. And sandwiches to take away as well. Mm -hmm. Even better. Something hot for one o'clock. Well, it sounds like you're about to make your fortune. Mm. Don't you think we should tell some of them? Don't forget the ever and daughters. That's not fair. Kevin's a good father. If he's a boy again, he'll be besotted. He'll not turn his back on Sophie and Rosie, no matter how many boys he has. He'll have new priorities. What priorities? Well, a whole new family. My girls are not going to fit in, are they? You're wrong, Sal. I hope so. I'm going wrong. No, come on. Have another drink. Cheer yourself up. No, I'm going. See you later. Give it a miss. Why? You enjoy football. Well, like you say, I spend so much time in work. I ought to spend some at home. Oh? Yeah, so I'll cook tonight. You can put your feet up. You don't have to, you know. Well, you deserve it. Why? Why not? So, you did it then? Late tonight till the uh, sonic shorts. Might be. 
Funny, I think we'll be heading straight for the Rovers rather than the cafe. Uh, true, but uh, it might be worth a try. Tonight, maybe. Fine. Only forget the we. What, you, you've something planned? Hope so. Martin's cooking and David and Sarah Lou just happen to be out. Oh, I see. Well, that'll be nice. Yeah, it will. Thanks, Roy. So you're yeah, then, have they? Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd have seen them. I bet they looked a picture. You all right, Sal? Yes, I'm fine. You finding it a bit difficult, him and Alison? Oh, girl. Sal, what is it? Come on, you can tell me. I can't. Yes, you can. I'm your friend. If I do tell you, you promise you won't tell Martin? Of course not. Kevin came round last night. He had a drink and... Well, it got nostalgic. And? And I slept with him. mean to. I had no intention of doing I wish I hadn't. Just a moment of madness, that's all. And there's so much history between us. Is that all it was? History? Oh, and the wine and... Have you seen Kevin today? Yeah. And I've told him he has to forget about it. And there's nothing to worry about, is there? I don't know. Oh, I wonder how long they're gonna be. Hiya. We met at Christmas. Jerry, isn't it? Rebecca's husband. Is anything wrong? Listen, I don't want to stand talking on your doorstep, if you don't mind. Well, if you're looking for Martin, he's It's not... you I need to talk to. Do you mind if I just come in? Look, I'm busy. I've got the teas on. I'm expecting the kids back. Don't worry. I won't be here long. I just thought it was about time you knew that your husband was having it away with my wife. You needn't have sat. You're not stopping. Well, you're not listening to what I said. They're at it. Watch my lips. Your Martin and my Rebecca are having an affair. And what have you based this on? You've seen what they're like together. Like when? At Christmas? I've seen what you're like with a let alone Martin. And the little wine drinking sessions in the nurse's home. What's that then? <laughs> so that's it. He helped her through a tough time. You're telling me nothing I don't know. They work together. That's not all they do together, love. Believe me. Look, I know your game. You want to look to yourself before you start accusing others of something you can't prove. <laughs> You've no idea, have you? <laughs> Come here, you know. It doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. Look, I'm not listening to any more of this. I don't want you coming round here any more causing trouble for me and my family. I mean it. Now, do you mind going? Fine. I'm sorry I bothered you. I had you down as a bit smarter than this, you know. I was wrong, obviously. It's because you're judging me by your standards. Some people try to conduct themselves with a bit more dignity. Martin and Rebecca? Yes, from what I've seen. Whatever. Think what you like. But while you're telling me how wonderful they both are, they're out there making a fool of the pair of us. I'd feel sorry for you if you weren't so full of yourself. Of course. Martin's a lot younger than you, isn't he? Oh, you're evil. You can call me evil. Just don't tell me I'm blind. It's all right. Hiya. I was freezing out there. Had a good day? Yeah, not bad. Busy, you know. Yourself? Oh, great. I had Rebecca's husband round here earlier on. Very nice, I must say. You are? What's he doing coming round here? He was sniffing around the hospital looking for Rebecca at dinner time. So what's he said? 
He's accused you and Rebecca of having an affair. Hey? Who's come round here and said that? You know, I'll be out and all. A creep. I could have hit him, Martin. I mean, I was furious. It's hours ago and I've still not calmed down. I think he's sick. Well, I don't. Well, you can't go making accusations like that, Gail. Oh, I'm just not having this. Martin, sit down. I know I thought there was something going on between you and Rebecca, but I've seen her and I've seen him. He's trying to stir up trouble, Martin, and we mustn't let him. Yeah, but it's not just Rebecca's life he's trying to turn upside down now, is it? Come here. All I know is that as long as we love each other, he can't touch us. Mornings like this, I wish I had your job. Listening to lectures rather than slaving over hot stove. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? These day courses are a toss-up. I mean, OK, sometimes they're useful, but half the time you end up sat there being told something you know a damn sight more about than the bloke that's telling you. Well, enjoy the rest. <laughs> Anybody else going from Weatherfield General? Uh, not as far as I've heard. Anyway, if they let more than one of us go at a time, the hospital will practically shut down. We're short-staffed even when we're all in. I'll see you later. OK. See ya. How good of a footballer are you really? Not bad. You get stuck in, don't you, son? I play for school. We have a game on Sunday. Ah, do you think you'll win? Should do. I'll be OK to play, won't I? Oh, well, I don't know about that. I'll have to see how it goes, eh? Dad, I've got to play. Yeah, well, even Giggsy gets injured sometimes, you know. Ah, uh, do you like him, do you? Yeah, he's great. But you're better, eh? Might be one day. Come and see me play. Mm, well, maybe I will one day. Come on Sunday. That'll be all right, won't it, Dad? Oh, David, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Oh. He's all done and dusted. For that. I was worried sick when Roy told me. Yeah, well, it was a nasty gash, but it'll heal quickly. Roy said he might need stitches. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got some paper stitches, but he'll be fine. Mm, he was really brave. Yeah, yeah, he was, cos at home, normally, he's that soft, aren't you? Dad! <laughs> yeah, what? just ignore him, David. I can tell you well, Arden. Rebecca's coming to watch me on Sunday, though. Um, well, maybe if Rebecca was just uh, pulling your leg about that, son. Well, no, I mean, if, if I'm not working, I'll, I'll try and come. <laughs> you don't have to. Hey, listen, if he's as good as he says he is, I want to be able to see I knew him when he played for his school team. <laughs> to eat. Take a piece of fruit with you. Go on, Candy, it's you as well. Help yourself. Thanks. Can Candy's come for a tea tonight? Well, she can if it's all right with the man, yeah? Yeah. You, you just put that back. Yeah, Sarah. OK, I'll take it then. So you'll make sure it's all right with your mum? I will, yeah. OK, see you later. See you later. See you later. Bye. 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 Ah, funny girls, aren't they? For one thing, they're not into football. Can you imagine <laughs> that? How's your leg this morning? I think it's all right. Yeah, looks a lot better. Does that mean I'll be OK to play on Sunday? Well, we'll see how we go, shall we? Oh, that nurse that said she'll come on watch me, did she really mean it? Well, um... Rebecca? Yeah. Well, she might be working yet. And anyway, we've got to get you fit. Otherwise, no one will be coming watching you, will they? Huh? Uh, Rebecca didn't look too happy, did she? Is she still separated from her husband? Yeah, I think so. So come on, you do your teeth. I'll give you a lift. Yes, son. I thought I'd walk you home. Well, that's very nice of you. Mm. I'll have to get rid of those two first. Mm. Um, I've been thinking about Rebecca. She must be very lonely in that nurse's home on her own. Nah, she's got loads of mates. Well, I was just saying you could invite her home if you like. Ah, oh, that's great, thanks, but... Well, you know, she's a fairly tough character. I think she just wants to stand on her own two feet. <laughs> Nobody's that tough. No, no, true. Oi, you two. No use pushing the food around on your plate, Sarah Lou. I'm not. Chance to be a supermodel. 
Yeah, that day, if she wants to be a supermodel. More like a stupid model. <laughs> You're stupid. Anyway, I don't want to be a model. It's what you said. I just don't want to be fat. Is that such a problem? There's nothing on that plate that'll make you fat. Now eat it up. She never eats. Oh, shut up! And don't tell people to shut up. Yeah, well, if she doesn't eat, there'll be a lot of other things that she won't be doing, like going out and doing your paper round. I mean it, young lady. So, like your mother says, eat. Yes. Just leave me alone. I am sick of you going on at me all the time. You're always going on at me. No one's going on at you. And we just don't want you to be ill, Sarah. I will be ill if I have to keep stuffing myself like this. Sarah? No. We're going to have to say something. Yeah, well, let's have his tea first and then we'll have a word. I told you she's stupid. Then that's enough. Is it like this at your house, Candice? Worse sometimes. <laughs> Good. See, I've told you. It's not just us. Hi, David. I think we can run to a clean pair of these. What do you think, girls? Eh? My lucky socks. <laughs> oh, David, you oh. should have told me, love, and I washed them for you. Well, football's not about luck, you know. It's about strategy. So just remember those moves that we've practised. Keep your mind on the game and don't let the other team wind you up, because they'll try. So, what are you girls going to do today? Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Doss around, watch videos. Well, why don't you come to the match? Yeah, a bit of fresh air, do you good? I don't want them watching me. Yeah, like we'd want to watch a bunch of little kids trying to play football any road. You're just jealous, because it's our schools in Millfield and we're going to win. Yes. It's only our junior schools. Uh, it's not, actually. We've got the juniors and the seniors. Oh, yeah. They'll all be there, girls. All the lads from your school and all. Maybe Mum's right. Bit of fresh air. <laughs> David! Come on, get stuck in! That's <laughs> it! That's it! Go on, David. No! Oh! I watch the ball! Look at him! You're going to put the ball right off! Well, if he just do what I told him! But he really fancies himself, doesn't he? Oh, my God, he is so hanging. I can see his spots from here. Uh, can you imagine snogging that? <laughs> Seeing someone you like? Mm, yeah, right. You must be joking. Might as well have stayed at home. <laughs> He's got some bottle, that lad. <laughs> Go on! Come on, David! Oh, that's nearly it now. Oh, come on! It just depends on how much time the ref's had in all the stoppages. Was that a classic performance or what? I'm hungry, Mum. You just had burger and chips. Yes, my chips and all. Oh, come on, Gail. He's used a lot of energy today, and that goal at the last minute it was just the icing <laughs> on the cake. You'll be getting him big headed. <laughs> oh, uh, We'd have never won that game if it hadn't been for our David today. You know, I wish we had a camcorder. We could have come back and watched the highlights. But instead, you'll go down the Rovers and brag to your mates. Huh? Uh, no, actually, I thought I might go over to the shop and get a couple of cans. Well, I want to be with my family, don't I? Eat in or out? Out. I've not got the time. I've got to be down the canal in ten minutes. Oh! They've shifted you, then? My proper job. Dredging. Got two jobs, then, have you? Except there's only one of them paid. Oh. And how's the graffiti cleaning? Why do you ask that? Just asking. What team does that lad of yours support? Not Weatherfield County Football Club. No, man, you. Is he in school today? Well, I hope so. Aye, aye. Your daughter's at the wish, you. Hey, hey. What's he saying about me? Oh, ignore him. He's a very funny fella. No, he don't make me laugh. So, have you come to help me out in your dinner hour? No, I've come to borrow a fiver. Mm. Let's see what I can do. 
I'll give it you back when I get paid. Yes! Of course you will. Look, um, I'm working late tonight. Do you fancy coming in here for your tea? Oh, no, it's, um, it's all right. I might as well get something to eat at home. I'll see you later, then. OK, thanks. See ya. I think you're more like Monday morning. Oh, fine. <laughs> what time do you want me in? Well, come at 8.30, then I can take you around everything. Right, half eight it is. See ya. I'll see you. Bye. I've just got myself a new stylist. Very good. Uh, give us a couple of scones to take away, love. Coming up. Alma, now, I was going to phone you. Have you got any plans for tonight? No. Why? Well, could you make some? Because, um, well, I've got Bob Bradshaw coming over at tea time. I think it's best if it were just the two of us. Yeah, but I thought you weren't interested in him. Uh, no, I'm not. I thought I'd put him out of his misery. You know. And uh, how exactly could you intend to do that, then? Well... Uh, I'm telling the truth, I suppose. I mean, it's too soon after Alpha. Not to mention Sergo, eh? And, um, you know, that I'm very busy at work, too busy for a full-time relationship, and uh, he's a lovely chap and all that, you know, etc., etc. Yeah, are you, are you sure that he fancies you? Alma, I may not be brain of Britain, but I can tell when a fella's got a crush on me. After all, there's been plenty of them. <laughs> well, can I help it if men find me irresistible? Well, you could stop chasing everything in trousers. I have been very restrained with Bob. It would be very easy to lead him on, you know, but it's against my principles. That's true. Ask Fred. Oh. 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 There you go. Where have you been? Oh, Tandy's got a first pay packet today. It was late night shopping. Yes, I know that. I was supposed to be meeting your father half an hour ago. Oh, sorry. Sit down, I'll get my tea. Did you buy anything? Nothing I like fits me. I find that hard to believe. I mean it. I tried these jeans on and I was the biggest, fattest heifer ever. There's nothing on you. Do you want a bet? I don't have to. I can see for myself. Mmm. You're lovely. I'll see you later. See ya. talking about in the cafe? Yeah, the one that's the council official. Apparently he had some dealings with Audrey and she got the idea that he fancied her. Oh, that's me, ma'am. Mm. When it turned out that it was me that he had his eye on. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Well, I mean, she's hardly talking to me now, is she? I mean, I offered to take her out for a bit of lunch, but... Oh, no, no, she got things to do. Oh, hello. Hiya. <laughs> what time's dinner ready? Uh, when your dad gets back. Don't tell me you're hungry for once. She is. You said you were too. Well, have some fruit to keep you going. No, might as well wait. So, I'm in a bad box. Oh, as soon as she finds someone else to flirt with, she'll get over it. <laughs> and it means you can stop and have some dinner with us. Oh, no. Yeah, I've made loads, and uh, it gives me an excuse to open a bottle of wine. <laughs> Do you want one? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, did you win then? Oh, yeah, 2 1. Only scored the winning goal. Really? Yeah. Well done. Hey, Thank you. he's a star, your dad is. Yeah, and David. He plays for the school football team. Of course he does. Yeah, when he can't get anyone else. Oh, <laughs> hey, no, it's a no end to this family's talent. Yeah. What about you two girls then? What sports do you play? Oh, now you're asking. Washing their hair. Oh, yeah, oh. turning pages of magazines. No, no, I have to say, in defence of these two, that they carry a heavy paper bag on the back every morning, which is harder work than either of you two do. He'd collapse underweight. He would, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, I think girls are just best all round, oh, don't you? Yeah. We don't need this, do we? Yeah. And it's very nice to know that one girl in particular has eaten all her food today. Yeah, well done, Sarah. Yeah, well, I was just hungry. It doesn't mean I'm always going to eat loads. Yeah, well, anyway, well done. Well, she probably takes after her grandmother. I mean, she can live on a lettuce leaf. Mm. <laughs> a lettuce leaf and a gin and tonic. I've just seen her over at the Rovers. Oh, oh, that was an urgent business, was it? That's why she couldn't come to lunch. Right. Oh, I see. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, should no, I? no, no, no. <laughs> I'm very glad I might just let it slip that she was seen. You don't mind, do you? Not at all, no. Well, just, you know, stir things up a bit. <laughs> Are you sure you girls don't want a bit of toast to eat on the way? No, Just because I'm working doesn't mean to say you can skip breakfast, you know. I've told you. It's the most important meal of the day. Yes, exactly. I don't want you standing in a cold school playground with nothing on your stomach. We've got to go. All right, I'll see you. Hey, hang on, Sarah Lou. 
forgot this. What is that? It's chicken and mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? Yeah, well, it's your favourite. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing. I'll see you. Uh, what are you doing? It's worse than I thought. She's not eating at school either. Gail, you can't go through the kids' back. Yes, I can. I'm a mother. I'm worried about her. Doesn't mean you could go ransacking people's bags, Gail. <sighs> anyway, how are we getting this all out of proportion? It's only a couple of butties. No, it's not, Martin. It's worse than that. It's been going on for weeks. She's not eating her breakfast and she's not eating at school. Uh, have you seen my magazine? Uh, hang on a minute. I want a word. What? Why haven't you eaten this? I had some chips with candy. Sorry. Sarah Lou, I don't understand you. I mean, one minute you're asking for salad because you want to be healthy, the next you're stuffing yourself with chips. Well, I was the same at her age. If it wasn't deep fried, I wouldn't touch it. Anyway, I've got to go. See ya. See ya. I don't make sandwiches for fun, you know. Be sure you... Don't forget your PE kit. Squashed and ironed. Yeah, thanks. And have some breakfast. I don't want you going to school on an empty stomach. Mum, um, I really don't think I feel well enough to go to school. What's the matter? I've got, like, a um, stomach ache. Well, I'm not surprised the little amount you've been eating. Gail! But why don't you just go to work? I'll look after this, OK? I don't want her missing school because she's not eating properly. Mum, it's nothing to do with my eating. Look, why don't you just go? I'll sort it, all right? OK. But make sure she has some breakfast. Come on. What's the problem? I've told you. So you're really not well enough to go to school? Might be. I've got PE Miss Redford's horrible. Well, if that's all that's stopping you, I'll write you a note. I'll just say that you're not feeling so good. Thanks. And if you get any worse, Sarah, you can always ring your mum at the calf, can't you? Thank you. <clears throat> so how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm all right. No problem with your PE teacher? No. Thanks. You haven't eaten much. Yes, well, I don't want to upset my stomach again, do I? Anyway, you don't have to stay if you've finished. Oh, I'm going to Candice's then. Do you think that's wise after the way you've been today? Yeah, I think it's a good idea for us to go out for a couple of hours. It'd just be back by our fate. OK? OK. See us. See ya. Thanks for backing me up. Well, being confrontational won't do yeah, any good, will it? I just don't think she should be going out if she's not well. She went to school. Do you know, I don't know why I bother saying anything in this house anymore. Nobody ever listens. But where is she? We said a couple of hours. She's not half eight yet. Well, you don't seem very worried. Yeah, well, I don't like to worry when there's nothing to worry about. Well, I think there is something to worry about when your daughter's not eating enough. She is eating. Yes, but not enough. Don't you even care? Yeah, of course I care. I just don't want to jump to any conclusions, that's all. She's not underweight. OK, she's not eating like a horse, but she's young and she wants to look like a model. She'll get over it, OK? Hiya. Oh, look. Dead on time. Yeah, we said half eight. I'll get you supper. Oh, it's all right. I've already eaten it for Lisa. See, she's fine. But we don't know that she did eat at Candice's. She could be lying. Yes, she could. She could also be telling the truth. The point is, we don't know, do we? OK, I'll have a word with her, all right, but not now. But it's been enough said today, OK. Just let things calm down and then I'll talk to her. I've got an interview for that job. Charge nurse on a &E. Great. Can't you eat a bigger portion than that? Mum. You can always go back for a second day, Sarah. Yeah, well, I will if I'm hungry. Anyway, I'm off upstairs because I've got to go and get dressed yet. Right, time I was off as well, so I'll see you later. All right, see you later. All right. Do you see that? See what? Well, she's taking her breakfast upstairs. She could be flushing it down the loo for all oh, we know. come on, Gail. And you said you'd talk to her. Talk at her, you mean? I think you've done enough of that already. Too much, in my opinion. Look, you've just got to trust her. She's not what I would call thin. She's not anorexic. Girl. No, not yet, maybe. 
But that's the way she's going. Listen, I'm going to be late. Just give her some space, will you? Just give her some time. Make that look for a nice time? Yeah, it was fine. Where's David? Is it Simon's? I'm picking him up later. So what would you like for your tea? Oh, I'm not fussed, really, anything. Well, I don't suppose you've had uh, much for your lunch, have you? So, uh, thought I might roast us a chicken. Roast potatoes to go with it? Yeah, well, you, you don't really have to go to any trouble. I mean, maybe we should wait and see what Martin fancies first. When I came here, enough to work. Are you ready? We'll have ours. Martin can have his cold. Yeah, well, I don't mind waiting. I'm not actually hungry. Sarah Lou, we have to talk about this. What? You know what? Why you've stopped eating properly. I haven't. Yes, you have. You're going to make yourself ill. Mum, I'm not even thin. Just, it's these damn posters in your bedroom. Pop stars, models, all looking like the starving waifs. Yeah, well, you should go snooping in my room then, should I you? I don't go snooping in your room and you know it. You're just trying to get me off the subject. Which is... These people you admire... They're not normal women, Sarah Lou. You shouldn't be trying to copy them. Yeah, well, I will want to try and copy you. You nag me constantly all the time, just like you constantly nag Martin. Now, that's enough! Martin agrees with me totally as far as your eating habits are concerned. Yeah, right, I bet he does. You know, the only reason he probably does agree with you is to avoid an argument with you. Martin's the only person in this house that's nice to me. You better go home. You're worse than Sarah Lou playing with the food. We had a chat last night. Did you? I just don't seem to be able to get through to her. Martin, are you listening? Look, Gail. I think it's time for me and you to have a bit of a talk. I know what you're going to say. Oh, do you? You think I'm dealing with it all wrong, don't you? What's that? You just think I'm making matters worse. Well, I think you might be getting a few things out of proportion, yeah. yeah. Well, how do you expect me to behave when my own daughter's starving herself? Well, you're exaggerating. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with dieting anymore. It's just turning into a battle of wills. Yeah, she is digging her heels in. She just doesn't like me telling her what to do anymore. So why are you letting things get out of hand? Because it's already out of hand, Martin. I mean, she carries on like this, she's going to make herself seriously ill. Look, Gail. What? Oh, nothing. Nothing, no. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm off. I'll see you later. Never mind dashing off. You can come and have some breakfast first. I haven't got enough time. I'm going to be late. No, you're not. You've got plenty of time. And you're going nowhere until you've had something to eat. Well, then I'll get something to eat at break. Well, just in case it slips your mind, I'd like to see you eat something now. Oh, come on, Sarah. I'm not Sit hungry! Down, just about enough of this! You're going to eat something if you have to sit there all day. And we're going to do this every mealtime until this nonsense stops. I'm off. Yeah. Me too. Sarah? Um, yeah, I will in a minute. But you said you were in a hurry. Yeah, I've got some visits home. I've left it upstairs. OK. See you later, then. See ya. See ya. You think that was wrong with me, don't you? Yes. It was a bit drastic. Yeah, well, it calls for drastic measures. Even if she hates me for it. Oh! Trash. Bill's need post, and I've left him on the night, please. You go on. I'll see you later. Sick. No, I didn't. 
Sarah, don't lie to me. Mum, I'm not lying to you. Anyway, it's your fault you made me eat when I wasn't hungry. Do you realise how dangerous this is? Do you know what you're doing to yourself? Will you stop going on well, at me? I might as well for all the good it does. Well, if you won't listen to me, maybe you'll listen to a doctor. Mum! I'm not waiting till you're four and a half stone and your hair's falling out. I mean it, Sarah. Someone's got to make you see sense. Sarah Louise Platt. Take a seat. What can I do for you? I don't know why you're looking at me. You're the one that thinks I need to see the doctor. Sarah Lou isn't eating properly, and I'm worried that it might lead to something more serious. And you don't agree with your mum? Yeah, well, I have been trying to eat less, but um, that's just because I'm getting fat. Rubbish. Yeah, but you don't know. You can see that she's not fat, Doctor. They just get it into their heads that they've got to be as thin as a rake. Yeah, well, it's better than being big and fat. You are not fat. I blame these ridiculous models. They don't know the damage they do. Yeah, but it's you that's always going on about food, not me. Am I the one who makes herself vomit? Is that what you do? No. Now, the only reason I was sick was because she forced a big bowl of cereal down my throat when I wasn't even hungry. Do you skip meals, though? Um, yeah, sometimes. Do you eat snacks between meals? Yes, sometimes. Teenage girls are particularly conscious of their figures. It doesn't necessarily make them anorexic. So I'm worrying over nothing. Why don't you pop on those scales for me, Sarah Lou? We'll see how much you weigh. I don't think no. you're particularly underweight. So I'm overweight. Maybe by pound or two. Nothing to worry about. Be puppy fat. Oh, I'm still fat. Anyway, the best way to maintain your ideal weight is a combination of a healthy, balanced diet and plenty of exercise. Not by cutting out meals. I hope you're listening to this. What's your general health like? Have you had any illnesses recently? Well, she was poorly last week. How did you feel? Uh, just didn't feel very well. I had a um, stomach ache. Any other symptoms? Um, uh, I don't know, um, I felt tired and dizzy like I was going to faint. You didn't tell me this. Why don't you pop behind that screen, Sarah Lou? We'll take a look at you. Um, what do you think the matter is? I'm going to examine her, just to be on the safe side. What is it? What's wrong with her? I'd like to wait for Sarah Louise to get dressed before I say anything more, if that's okay. Well, why? What have you found? I really don't want to say anything more without Sarah Louise present. But there is something wrong. I can tell there is. Just hold on a second. Come and take a seat. <clears throat> Are you happy to talk with your mum present? Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to tell us? No. Will somebody tell us what's going on? The reason why Sarah Louise has put on some weight is because she's pregnant. I'm sorry, but it's very clear Sarah Louise is pregnant. I'd say as much as five months. <gasps> She's 13 years old. She's never had a proper boyfriend. Tell her, tell her. Tell her there's a mistake. Sarah Lou, look at me. Look at me, please. 
Sarah Lou. Do you realize what she's saying? Tell the doctor. You can't be pregnant if you've never had sex. I do you realise that it's too late for a termination? Do you know what that means? Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you talk to us? I didn't know. How could you not know? You must have noticed your period stopped. Sarah Lou is only 13. Yes, I know that. Well, at that age, her menstrual cycle can be very erratic and can be affected by stress by weight loss. By pregnancy? Yes. But our bodies go through many changes around the time of puberty. It would be very easy to miss the signs. Look, I want you to know I'll be here to see you through every step of the way. Starting with a scan to make sure that you and the baby are both healthy. We should get that done straight away. I can make you an appointment at the hospital for tomorrow, if that's OK. What about school? Yes, that's fine. In the meantime, this has obviously been a big shock <sighs> for both of you. Maybe it would be better if you took Sarah Louise home now, give you a chance to discuss it together, and then we can talk again. Is that what you want? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, then. Oh, uh, Mrs. Platt, would you like me to let social services know? We don't need social services. Well, you never know. They may be able to help. They have a lot of experience with teenage pregnancies. And, of course, I shall be in close contact too. Yes, well, thank you. meeting. I know who you are. That's why are you staring at me? Looking to see where my little girl went. Barely an hour ago we were a teenager. Paper round, pocket money. Now. Yeah, well at least I'm not anorexic. You've no idea what you've done, have you? Are you going to tell me? Tell you what? Who the father is. It's not a game, Sarah. I know. So? It's just this lad in my class. And does he have a name, this lad? Why, what are you going to do? <sighs> well, I'm not going to invite him round to Sunday lunch. I can think of a few things I would like to do to him. We only did it once. Once is enough! Or did you tell you couldn't get pregnant the first time? <sighs> I, can't, I can't believe we're having this conversation. It's my worst nightmare come true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to shout. It's just difficult. I'm not angry with you. Who knows? Nobody. Not even Candice? Oh. <laughs> Nobody knows. He promised me that he wouldn't tell anyone so... <laughs> Oh, no. 
It doesn't make sense. What's the kids? Sarah Lou's having a bath. David playing on his computer. Good. We can talk then. Have you eaten? No. No, I'm fine. Did you go to football? No, I just had a drink on the way home. Just one? Does it make a difference? Not really. I think after I tell you what I heard today, I think you're going to want another one anyway. Why? What are you talking about? I took Sarah Lou to the doctor's this afternoon. A doctor? I caught her throwing up in the bathroom. I told you I was worried about her. Well, are you going to tell me what you're talking about? She's pregnant. Now, is this some kind of joke? <laughs> I wish it was. I wish we could all just have a good laugh and go back to rout about food and... <sighs> smoking behind the bicycle shed, but... it's not. The doctor examined her and did a test. She's pregnant. And you want a joke? I'll tell you a joke. She's five months pregnant. It's too late for an abortion. Sarah Lou's having a baby. She's having a baby. Like this. I still don't think it's registered with her. Martin. What? Did you know about this? Did you know she was having sex? How could I know? She talks to you. Well, not about this she doesn't. She... I knew it was serious when the doctor asked Sarah Lou's permission to tell me. Yeah, well, that's standard procedure. If Sarah Lou doesn't want us to know, then they don't have to tell us about it. Well, I think I might have realised soon enough. Five months? I could have hit her. To her. We've explained things to her. How could she? Could happen to anyone, I suppose. Yeah, well, then why did it happen to anybody? Anybody but us? Why us? Why did my daughter have to be the one to get caught? What are you doing? I'm going to have that drink. Yes, yeah, she feels terrible for letting me down, mate. Why is she not going to school? Nice. Going to the hospital. Yeah, okay. Uh, What's she going to the hospital for? She's going Appreciate for a checkup. Shame. I was hoping that was not serious. David. Uh, your lift's here, mate. Don't forget your lunchbox. Yeah, sister. Yeah, it's Martin Plyer. Now, uh, listen, uh, um, If you die, I'm having your room. Go on, you'll be late. I don't think I'll be able to today. Why did I tell him? Because until we all decide what we're going to do, we're not telling anyone, OK? Right. Right, that's it. I've got a day off from the hospital. Your appointment at the maternity clinic's half eleven. Roy reckons you've got that nasty flu bug that's going about. Now, is that it? Cos I'm getting a sore ear. It's not a time for joking, Martin. Yeah, and we can't carry on like it's the end of the world, either. Well, it's the end of Sarah Lou's world. Excuse me, can we please stop talking about me like I'm not here? Look, I'm sorry. It's just a... It's been a shock. That's for sure. Do you know what I've not seen for ages? What? 
seen a smile. Hey. Give us a smile. You better not count it. I missed that. Look, knock. There's nothing we can do about what's already happened, okay? That's done. But we can help you from now on. But you've really got to let us, you know? Yeah. Okay. Now, there's lots of things going to be happening, starting today with this scan. There's going to be loads of people telling you how to do this and how to do that. Uh, just don't be frightened, okay? Because we're going to look after you, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're, just, we're going to make sure that everything's okay for you. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Go and get dressed. And make sure you drink loads of water because it helps you with the ultrasound scan. Might as well get a good look at our first grandchild. <sighs> Any chance of a break? Do you want something to eat? No, I'm not hungry. <sighs> Mum, I can't help it if I'm not hungry. I didn't say anything. I'm too tired to say anything. You can do what you like. Can I go out? OK, I'll go upstairs. You're very quiet since you came back from the hospital. Yeah, well, it's still sinking in. All the repercussions. Do you want to see? No, oh, thanks. I saw her on the monitor. Sarah Lou wouldn't even look at it. She just isn't taking this in. She will do. She'll get used to it. I don't want anyone knowing about this, Martin. We've just got to keep her in and stick together. I know what people will think. I know how they look at oh, it. Gail. <laughs> not thinking straight now. Are you? Do you blame me? It's my child. <laughs> it's my child. Gail. 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 Just look at me. Look at me. Look, Sarah Louise is lucky. She's lucky to have you for a mother. There's many out there that would throw her out without a second thought. Martin, I know things haven't been very good between us, but we will come together on this. Yeah, we will. I'm relying on you. I know you are. <laughs> Tell me it's going to be all right. Tell me we'll get through it. We'll get through. We've no choice, have we? How long have you been up? Don't know. What time is it? Just after seven. Another one of these. This one's stone cold. I want you to tell me what to do, Martin. I've been sat here most of the night trying to get used to the idea. Sarah Lou pregnant. I can't. I just can't believe it. Gail. It's a, it's a fact of life. Teenage pregnancies happen. Teenage pregnancies, yes. Sarah Lou's 13. It's barely more than a child. I oh, know. What I mean to say is, well, 
All the families have to cope with the same problem, and, and they do. They cope. So will we. I don't want to cope. I want it to go away. So do I. Believe me, so do I. Feeling any better? Not so you'd notice, but you're right. It's not going to go away, is it? We've got to learn to face it, all of us. Well, breakfast's a good start. Thanks. Sorry I bit your head off earlier. Yeah, well, it's been difficult for all of us. I know, but you're right. Other folk manage when something like this happens, and we will too. I don't know how I'll do it without you, though, Martin. Yeah, well, uh, I'll try my best. I know you will. Are you going to go on on your own today? Because I'm going to have to go into the hospital. We're short staffed as yeah, it is. No. I'm fine, I understand. You sure? Yeah. I'll ring the cafe and I'll tell Roy that um, I'm not fit for work yet. Not really a lie, is it? And um, I'll try and have a talk to Sarah Lou. Sounds like she's up. What are you doing, though? Does it look like I'm going to school? Um, do you think that's wise? Well, I'm not exactly ill, am I? You're pregnant? Yeah, and I'm going to school. Sarah Lou, there are things you and me have to talk about. I don't want to talk! Oh, come on, Sarah. You've had a big shock. <sighs> but we all have, right? None of us wants to face facts, but I'm afraid we're going to have to. All of us. I'm going to school! You are not stepping foot outside this door. And the last place you're going to right now is school. You are. I want to go. My friends are there. Exactly. Your friends. And this lad, whoever he is, who got you into trouble. What are you going to do? Tell him the happy news? <sighs> Hi. Hiya. Are you hungry? Yeah. I've made some sandwiches. Do you want a drink? Sorry about this morning. Oh, it's all right. It's just I'm worried about you, Sarah Lou. About what's going to happen. There's things we need to talk about, you and me. Decisions we have to make. Mum, please, can we talk about this later? No. I'm afraid we can't. We're running out of time. And the first decision we have to make is what we're going to do about the father. We need to know who he is. Well? Well, what? I've told you, he's just some lad. Just some lad. Sarah Lou, this lad got you pregnant. Well, what's wrong with you? Don't you realise what's happened, what's going to happen? Of course I do! Will you stop treating me like I'm stupid? I'm not stupid! This is my life, my life, not yours, and I don't want you interfering in it! Nothing much, it's all rubbish. Well, maybe you're growing out of it. You're gonna have to do a lot of growing up very quickly now, aren't you? Um. All right. I'm not gonna go and have a go at you. Just need to talk to you, woman to woman. It's gonna hurt, isn't it? I mean, having a baby, it's gonna hurt me a lot. <sighs> more than you can imagine, love. In more ways than you can think of. I've seen things on the telly. I mean, we've done things like that in school, but it looks awful. But it's wonderful as well. And when the time comes, we'll be there with you. I'm not like you know. Oh. I know you're not, love. It just happened. I mean, one minute we were just messing around, having a laugh, and... One thing led to another? Yeah. Did he ask you? Did you want to have sex with him? I wanted to know what it'd feel like. I mean, neither of us really had any idea what we were supposed to be doing. It was just a load of fiddling and fumbling. It didn't feel special, and I certainly didn't feel special. I didn't even think he'd done it right. But he 
You must have Muslim mum. Oh, Sarah Lou. Didn't you realise you had your whole life ahead of you to find out what having sex with a boy felt like? I still have got the rest of my life. But with a baby, Sarah Lou. With a baby. It changes everything. <sighs> You'll have to think of your baby first, whatever you do. You'll have to put your baby first. <sighs> you will be there, won't you? Yes, I will. Another life depends on you now, Sarah Lou. It's a big responsibility for anybody. Let alone a girl of 30. Miss Gregory has given me these to give to Sarah Louise. They're just some English books. Right, so. thanks. I'll see if she gets them. So where is she? She got the flu or something? Yeah, she's in bed. Hi there. You don't look very sick to me. Well, she is, so thanks for the books, but I think it'd be best if you went now. I just wanted to stay for a quick chat. I, w I won't stay longer, so I... No, I don't want to talk. <laughs> you what? That's a new one. I said I don't want to talk to you, OK? Come on, what's up? I said I don't want to see you. Fine, you can suit yourself. We were all for seeing your mates this morning. What's <laughs> good for? Oh, Mum, everyone's going to know, aren't they? <laughs> everyone's going to be looking at me and talking about me. I can't face it. I just... I wish I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Any joy? Ah, oh, she's still out for the count. Well, what are we going to do? We'll oh. just leave her there. Why not? Good long sleep will do her good. Do them both good. Both? Oh. I should think she'd be shattered after last night. Thought she'd never stop crying. Yeah, well, I suppose it's finally sinking in. I think she's still in shock. I know I am. Yeah, well, we've all got to come to terms with it, haven't we, sooner or later? <sighs> How could she be so stupid, Martin? She's not stupid. She just didn't know. Well, why didn't she think? She's got a brain and a head, a very good brain. Don't drag yourself daft with questions like that, Gary. It's all so senseless, Martin. Well, what's done's done. We can't change it now. All we can do is look after her and the baby. Give them all the love and support we can, I suppose. You know, I don't know how I'd have got through the last couple of days if it hadn't been for you. Won't be daft. Can you imagine going through something like this on your own? Lots of girls in Sarah Lou's situation must come from broken homes. Oh, I don't bear thinking about. At least we've got each other. You talk to Sarah Lou tonight about the father. Do you think it'll do any good? Well, you never know. She won't say anything to me. I do, mate. Not stopping, just coming for a drink. Stella's done in bed. Yeah, she's not well. Did the hospital say what was up with her? Just a bug. All right then. Don't go wandering off, your dinner's nearly ready. I won't. We'll have to tell him sooner or later. Yes, I know. Not yet. I'm your mother for that matter. Well, I'm definitely not telling her yet. Right, so we're just going to carry on pretending there's been a flu epidemic, are we? Keeping Sarah Lou off school. You stopping off work. Lowering our voices when Davy uh, comes in. Well, it's half term next week anyway. Yeah, well, what if she wants to go out? We can't keep her under lock Look, and key, can we? Please, Martin. We haven't had a chance to get used to the news ourselves, let alone the whole street knowing. Well, same as you'll put it in the paper. Well, it's as good as if you tell me mother. I just don't think all this cloak and dagger not in front of the kids stuff is very healthy. Well, Sarah Lou doesn't want anyone to know. She couldn't even face Candice last night. That's her best friend. Well, how did so it do? Well, you know, one minute we're going to face it, the next we're pretending nothing's happened. Oh, you're up. I heard you talking about me. Are you surprised? Are you ashamed of me? No. I'm not exactly proud of what you've done either. Well, what were we doing? We were just talking things over, see what we can do for the best. Behind my back? No. I'm going out. Where to? I don't know, Candice's. I would rather you didn't. Why? Well, we just would. Tough! 
Sarah! I don't want you telling me what to do all the time! Well, it's a bit late in the day for that, don't you I'll think? Oh, just keep it down, will you? And I did tell you what to do. I didn't expect you to put it into practice at 13 years of age. It's not my fault, is it? Um, we've got a visitor. Social services. Oh. Well, uh, come on in. Mrs Platt, I'm Lydia Summers. We had a referral from a GP, Dr Wilson. She'll have told you she'll be getting in contact with us. Well, she mentioned something. I didn't think you'd be turning up on the doorstep. Well, perhaps you've not received the letter. We have written to let you know. It's about your daughter, Sarah Louise. Is this her? Hello there. Well, uh, I don't wish to be rude, but, um, just what is it you want? Whenever we're notified of an underage pregnancy, we always visit the family at least once. Do you now? You mean you've come to check up on us? No, but there is a childcare issue here. Yeah, and we're dealing with it as a family. I just need to establish a few facts about the family setup and to offer our support as much as anything else. And if we don't need your support? I can understand you might feel this an intrusion, but there's really nothing to worry about. Well, do you want to see all of us, or just me and Martin? Um, if I could talk to the whole family first, and then perhaps I could have a little chat with Sarah Louise on her own. Room here, is it? Oh, with a son, David. How old is he? He's nine. Where is he now? He's out with his mates. But uh, he doesn't know anything about Sarah Lou. He doesn't? No. It's nothing we've been trying to keep from him, it's just that we haven't found the right moment, have we? We haven't had a chance to get used to it ourselves yet. No, so if he comes in, which he might do any minute, if you just don't mind keeping it done. Of course. Have you always lived here? Um, yeah. Um, since we got married. When was that? 1991. Eight years. And you were living together before then? You're Sarah Lou's natural father? No, no, I'm a stepdad. I see. Her father died in 89. When you were tiny. I'm sorry. That must have been awful for you. Well, both of you. Well, you get on with life, don't you? Do either of you work? We both do. Yeah, I'm a nurse at Weatherfield General. Right. And I work in a cafe just round the corner. I take it you work shifts. And what's the big deal about that? Well, I know myself how hard it is to run a home when both parents are working. Yeah, I'll tell you what else is hard. Trying to bring up two kids on a nurse's wage. I have every sympathy, Mr Platt. <sighs> Obviously, you don't get to spend as much time at home as a family as you might wish. Well, does anybody? You probably think I'm... You've been up there a long time. Well, I should be searching Sarah's room for clues. Either that or putting ideas in her head. I thought she seemed quite nice. Well, she's trying to lull you into a false sense of security. Coming down. It was very nice to meet you all. I do hope you'll stay in touch with us. And if there's anything you need, advice or support, please don't hesitate to get in contact. Thank you. I'll see you out. Goodbye, Mr Platt. Yeah, bye. I didn't like it here any more than you. There's no need to be rude. I don't want social workers coming round here out of the blue, poking the nose into my life, thanks very much. You made it look like with something to hide. Well, I felt like I had something to hide. This is not like you, Martin. She came to offer help and advice. Oh, yeah. I know how hard it is to run a family when both parents are working, meaning your 13-year-old daughter is pregnant because you neglect her. No! Well, that's what she implied. She made it clear from the start that they visit parents in cases like Did this. Did you see her face light up when she found out I was Sarah Lou's stepdad? Did you? You're imagining oh, things. Oh, come on, Gail. You could see what was going through her mind. Oh, now you're being stupid. Oh, yeah. 13, pregnant, lives with a stepdad. Oh, come on, it's a textbook case. And she's not the only one that's going to point the finger either. Yeah, well, all the more reason for making sure nobody else finds out. Yes. It is. Is that it? I'm sorry I lost my rag earlier. OK. My turn tomorrow. Truth be told, it's myself I'm angry with, deep down. Why? Well, just the fact of social services being here, checking up on us. What's that say about us? It says we have a 13-year-old daughter who's pregnant. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet even Les Battersby's not had to go through that. I mean, we're good parents, aren't we? Respectable parents. How can we be when we let all this happen? 
It could happen to anyone. Mm. There's no point feeling guilty about it. I do feel guilty. That's what I can't get away from. I feel like we've let Sarah Lou down and the last thing I needed was that woman pointing the finger. She wasn't pointing the finger. She was and she won't be the only one. Do you know how that must feel, Gail? Listen, if news gets out about this, people round here, they're going to have a field day. Are you watching the time? To be at the clinic at 10.30. Oh, yeah, we don't want to be late. We don't want social services coming round again, seeing if they can be of assistance. Well, that's what'll happen, Gail. You know, why didn't they just say we think you're lousy parents? And that's for you, Mr Platt. W will you stop going on about it? People around here won't pussyfoot around when news gets out. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Mm -hmm. If we come to it. Are you ready? What? Oh, uh, we've got a clinic appointment this morning, 10.30, remember? Oh, I don't feel like it. <laughs> well, it's not a matter of what you feel like. Yeah, well, I'll go next week. You can't do that with appointments, Sarah. There's loads of time. Sarah, you are coming to this clinic. I am seeing Candice. You've got all half term to see Candice. This is more important. Why? Uh, I think you know why. So make me. I beg Sarah! your pardon. It's 8.19. I hope she's all right. Oh, yeah, we don't want to be led astray by any strange lads now, do we? It's Candice's fault. She was fine till she met her. Yeah, if it's anyone's fault, it's ours. <sighs> it's getting us nowhere, this, is it? Who's to blame and who isn't? Yeah, we're bound to wonder, aren't we? But like you said, it happened. We've got to put Sarah Lou first now and just find a way through this. Nothing else is going to help, is it? No. No, you're right. Let's do that then, eh? Oh, the wanderer returns. You had your tea? Yeah, um, I had it at Candice's. I'll go to bed, I think. Are you still friends, then? Well, I wouldn't have been there all day, would I? Did she ask why you were in a funny mood last Friday? No, what you mean is, have I told her? No. No, I mean... That is all you care about, who knows? You don't even care about me. Yes, we do. Yeah, if you cared more about me, this would never have happened. Sarah. Sarah! Listen, she didn't mean that. Oh, well, we've got nothing to worry about, then, have we? What time's your interview? Half eleven, I think. Well, I hope you sound a bit more positive when you're there. Well, I've not had any time to plan for it, have I? Just have to wing it. I suppose that's my fault. No, it's not. But that reminds me. I've rearranged your appointment for the maternity clinic for Friday. What, this coming Friday? Yes. And there's no need to consult your diary, cos this time you're going. I never said I wasn't. No. But just remember, we're doing this for you, OK? We're on your side. There's no need to make us jump through hoops every time we try and get you to do something. Do you want toast? No, thanks, I'll serve you. Yeah? You could have got a dress, mate. Right. <laughs> so how are you planning on productively using your half-term, then? You're going to chase a few aliens, lay waste to civilization as we know it? Might, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Juice? You. Please. Sorry, me. Door was open. Hi. Ma'am, just stay where you are. Why? Flu. We're contagious. D You've had flu the whole week. No, you look fine to me. I'll risk it. I feel we said I had the constitution of an ox. No, ma'am, really, I don't want you to risk getting this. It's awful. You'll be laid up for days. What flu bug? Eat your cereals. Well, look, I just wanted a quick word, if you'd got a minute. Well, is it important or is it gossip? No, I don't know. Look, it won't take long. Look, ma'am, this is just not a good time. Just give us a couple of days to get over it and I'll come around to the salon. I mean... We don't want you to risk your health. Yeah, all right then. Well, the uh, lovely seeing you, even from a distance. Bye, Grandma. Bye, Grandma. Bye. Bye sweetheart. Bye, bye. What's going on? Who's got the flu? No one's got flu. Do you ever think I go on at you, asking you to make your bed, clean your room, pick up clothes from off the floor? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel right now. So, I've just told a little white lie to stop my mum going on at me. This house is going mad. I'm going to play on the computer. He said it. There we are, love. Thank Thanks, you. Rita. Oh, I'm so bored. Well, you could help. Lunch is nearly ready. Ooh, that's really exciting. Well, you think yourself lucky. I could do with a little less excitement in my life. 
Mum, why didn't you tell Grandma when she came round earlier? Because we're not ready to tell anyone yet. Including David, so don't go teasing him. Yeah, but you won't be able to keep it secret for much longer. <sighs> I know. We just need time to think about it before we go shouting it from the rooftops. I'll get it. What do you want? Sarah Lewin? Yeah. Hiya. Hiya. Okay. Hi, Candice. Just about to have dinner. Do you want to stay? Um, I don't know what you're having. Mum, <laughs> shepherd's pie. Yeah, go on then. Is that all right? Well, it doesn't look like I've got much choice, does it? All right, well, um, will you call us when it's ready? Because we might as well go upstairs. Sarah, remember what I said? You are... Hiya. Hi. Where'd it go? Not bad, actually. I don't think I said anything too controversial. Good. Extra money will come in useful. I said it went OK. I didn't say I'm the new A&E charge nurse. No. I've got faith in you. Yeah, glad to hear it. But don't hold your breath. There were six other candidates, and two of them are a lot more experienced than me, so... So, it's our turn. Time we had a bit of good news in this family. Yeah, well, don't get your hopes up too high. So, how's things on the home front? Candice is upstairs. All oh, right. I can hear him talking. Yeah. You're having me on. Wish I knew what they were talking about. Yeah, you can always bug the room, you know. I was joking. I just want to be sure we've discussed all the options before we turn ourselves into the best bitter gossip the streets had in years. Yeah, well, I think we're a bit low on options. She's having this baby, so maybe it's time we all just faced it, huh? As adoption? As fostering? Are you serious? We need to discuss it. So you want to give up your first grandchild to be adopted? No, I didn't say that. I know there are no easy options. I'm thinking of Sarah Lou. And if we have a chance to give her back a childhood, then I want us to have a serious talk about it. He writes, well, he... Yes, I do know that, Gail. <sighs> No, you're right. It's time we tackled the lad. I wish we didn't have to. Yeah, don't matter how we look at it. This was not the Immaculate Conception. She didn't know what she was doing. Some big lad comes along. How's she supposed to defend herself? Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Oh. Little kids mature quickly nowadays. They're up to all sorts, aren't they? At 13? I just can't believe, Martin, that she wasn't taken advantage of. And I blame myself. I should have protected her. Well, you can't protect a 13-year-old from being interested in boys and sexes. It's natural. I know they have crushes and pin-ups, but to actually... I mean, I know we talked about contraception, but you don't expect them to go out and do it. She knows about it all in theory, but she's hardly going to go over the road to the corner shop and ask for a packet of condoms, is she? She managed to ask for a packet of cigarettes. Oh, I was mad, do you remember? Yes, I do remember. It all seems so trivial now. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do, Martin? I don't think we should rule out adoption. Yeah, well, that's Sarah Louise's choice. But do you really think, when you hold that little baby in your arms, that you're going to be able to give it away? Morning, love. What do you want for your breakfast? Um, toast, please. Ooh, well, how about some porridge, eh? That'll set you up. Mm, why, what, we turned into three bears and all? Mm. Listen, love. We need to talk. This lad, you're going to have to give us his name. Why? Because we need to know. What, so you could go around and knock him out? Oh, of course not. You don't need to protect him, you know. I'm not protecting him! God, I never even want to see him again. Look, I know what you've told your mother, but now I need to ask. Did he... No, he didn't force me. Will everyone stop asking me that? It just happened. Look, next week, when half-term's over, you're going to have to go back to school and you're going to have to face him. So wouldn't it be no. better if... No. 
Mum, he doesn't know how. I don't want him to. Look, I don't care about him. He's, he's no one special. I just, please, I don't want you asking me questions. Well, the thing is, because you are only 13, there's going to be an awful lot of these questions. I mean, the school are going to have to know, for starters. Why? I just want things to go back to normal. Because you can't just go yeah, around. All right. That's enough for now, eh? You go get ready for hospital. Hi, Charlie. All right. Martin? We might have to wait ages. There's no point in us all hanging around. We'll see you at home later. Hang on. I thought the idea was we were going together. That's why I've taken the morning off. Yeah, but I mean, if anybody else recognises you. So? Sitting with your daughter in antenatal clinic. Yeah, and my wife. They might get the wrong idea. Don't you mean the right idea? Look, anywhere you work, gossip spreads like wildfire. Gail, okay, do you not think you're getting a bit paranoid? There's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. I'm not ashamed. I just want to keep things as quiet as possible until we get a few things sorted out. Oh, Martin, I know it must be a drag for you too. No, it's not! Please, let me do things my way. Oh, OK. Not like I've got much choice, does it? Right. See ya. Was there anything the midwife said that you didn't understand? Why me? That's mainly what I don't understand. Well, we could all torture ourselves with that one. Still wouldn't have an answer. I didn't mean to. We only did it the once. Donna Shaw's been with half the lads in class and she's never got pregnant. No, it's not fair. But then life's not fair, is it? So we've just got to say to ourselves it, it happened and get on with it. I don't want to get on with it. I just want something. I just want... Oh, oh, I'm all sorry. I just want things to go back to how they were. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Don't you worry. <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine, I promise. <laughs> I promise. Sarah got quite upset this afternoon. We had a few tears. Yeah, well, maybe it's finally sinking in. She keeps saying she wants things to go back to normal. Yeah, well, don't we all? She didn't know what she was doing. And when this baby's born, her childhood will be gone. So there's one thing a teenage mum can't be. It's a teenager. Yeah, OK, I can see what you're driving at, Gail, but... Uh, well, I still say adoption will make things worse. I mean, for one thing, she's always going to be wondering about this baby that she's given away. And then 20 years down the road, who's to know how she's going to feel about it? What if there was another option? Why what? Not so long ago, you were wanting us to have another child ourselves. Yeah. Now, you're not suggesting that we try and pass it off as our own, are you? Lots of grandparents do in cases like ours. Yeah, but Sarah will still be the mother. Folk will still know about it. We'll still have social on our backs all the time. Not if we go to Canada. What? Emigrate? No. We take Sarah Lou to Canada. We stay at Stephen's. She has a baby. We come back and we say that I've given birth. We have another child. Sarah Lou and David have a new brother or sister. You've got this all worked out, haven't you? It could work, Martin. It could be the answer to all our problems. Tell me. Why are you reckon that you should go to Canada? I don't want Sarah Lou to face what she's done. I don't want to face it. 
So it's just like running away then? Yeah. Only it's far enough and we can stay long enough to hide the truth. With Stephen and Nick in Quebec, people visit their relatives abroad. We've done it before. But she'll still be pregnant. She won't be pointed at and talked about. I don't want people round here thinking she's some sort of 13-year-old tart. <laughs> and I don't want the sympathy. She could have the baby in another town. We can't say we're going to Scotland or London for four months. Canada's the only place that won't arouse suspicion. So you're not thinking of staying over there permanently? No. Well, the situation doesn't change, then. You come back with the baby. Which we say is mine. Right, and I stay over here and that's what yes, I tell people. Yes, and people will believe you. Although it's a lie. Martin, I'm past caring what's truth. I want to shield Sarah Lou. The thought of my child with her child in her arms. She has no idea what she's heading for. Okay, yeah, don't I'm... say things that aren't true, do I? No. I mean, Alma just doesn't want to hear it, so someone's got to put her right. Yeah. Oh, let this be a lesson to you, Sarah Lou, my love. Men, they can't be trusted. They're only out for what they can get. Ma'am! What? Ah, last. Right, well, we're off then. So, uh, see you later, Audrey. All right. Oh, David, aren't you going to give your grand a kiss before you go? Don't like kissing. Oh, <laughs> Well, you won't be very popular when you get older, then. Every girl likes a kiss now and again. I won't kiss her. Oh, they all say that. It's a good job we don't take any notice of them, isn't it, Sarah Lou, darling? <sighs> now what? Right, so we'll be about an hour or so, OK? Yeah, be as long as you like. Oh. David needs the fresh air. Yeah, so do I. Go Bye. On. Bye. Isn't it lovely the way they're growing up? I mean, do you remember a time when all he'd talk about was Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh. And you are so lovely, eh? Won't be long before all the boys are running after you. <gasps> Ma'am, just pack it in, will you? But, well, now, what have I said? <sighs> well, I've thought about it, and I'm still against taking it to Canada. Why? Well, it's happened now. We've got to accept it, haven't we? No, we don't. Well, she runs away from one thing, she runs away from another. What's that teaching her about how to live a life? But her mother's duty is to look after a child. She'll learn that soon enough. Not if you put yourself in between them. Anyway, we can't make her do anything, can we? I grew up without a father, Martin. I know what it's like. Your mother married the mayor of Weatherfield. Not when I was a kid. She was out enjoying herself and I was the one who suffered for it. I don't think Sarah's going to grow up to be a hodry somehow. She's made a good start. Yeah. All the more reason for her to learn that actions have consequences. I don't want her going through life thinking that people will pick up the pieces for her. So what do you want her to do? Marry the lad? No! No. But he wants telling. He's about to become a father? Yes, I think he should find out sooner or later. So he can support them both? With his pocket money or his dinner money? With the money he makes from his paper round. No, so he can't talk any of the other girls in his class into doing what Sarah did. You think the other girls would be so stupid? Well, she's just a kid. She's not easy, Martin. She wouldn't go with any lad. She's not like that. Look, she's made one mistake, and I want her to get over it. I want her to look to the future, do the right thing. What right thing? Uh, live the truth, not a lie. You want her to behave like an adult. She's a child. Oh. Right. I'll give us on with this. Nana was there for ages. Was she? Well, you could have told her about me, so why didn't you? Well, it wasn't the right time. What, are you just going to wait until she finds out? No. Well, she's going to see it in the pram soon. There are things we need to talk about before that. Yeah, so, anyway. Let's have our dinner. We'll go and get David. I'll tell me, ma'am, when I'm ready. Yeah. In the meantime, you'll lie to her about why you went to Canada. You'll lie to Stephen and Nick, too, at least until you get there. Then, of course, they'll know about it, and Audrey won't. I'll tell everybody who needs to know. Yeah, then you'll put our names on the birth yeah, certificate. It's the best way. Yeah. Maybe you'll decide not to tell Audrey at all because she can't keep her mouth shut about anything. And what are we going to do about David? We're going to lie to our own son. I'll tell the family. OK, 
What about Stephen's wife? I suppose she'll know. She'll be there. She'll see for herself. Right. So what about my parents? Because they'll be on this side of the Atlantic. Oh, well, it might be better if they didn't find out. OK, so I've got to lie to them too, have I? My own parents. Martin, it doesn't matter about them! I beg your pardon! I'll be pleased they've got another grandchild. But they won't have a grandchild, will they? I'll have the grandchild. Martin, it doesn't matter! What? It doesn't matter that the family in Canada will know the truth, yet the family in England won't? We'll work something out. Oh, I can work it out now, Gail. Oh, yes. Someone's going to let something slip and word will get back. Audrey will hit the roof. And my mother and father will go off their heads. Martin, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're going to split the family, Gail. It's you know that, don't you? It's the only way. It's not the only way. And you know who else you'll be lying to, don't you? Who? The baby. And that'll last a lifetime. So no, Gail, it's not on. All right? It's just not on. Jim! We've made a decision. What decision? Oh, you were right. I think we should tell people. Your Nana Audrey, for one. Oh, no, please don't tell her. I don't want her to know. She has to. So do other people. I don't want to tell anyone. Well, you've got to. Well, we've got to, haven't we? No, Dr Wilson told me that I don't have to say anything to anyone. She says that you can't force me into anything. She also said you're going to give birth. And in a few months' time, that baby's going to be born, no matter what any of us want. I don't care! So, people have to know, haven't they? Who? Well, you're due in school first thing tomorrow morning. So, um, I think maybe we should ring the head first thing and make an appointment. You're going to tell the school? Well, I think they need to know what the situation is. No, they don't! Mum! Of course they do, Sarah. <laughs> I mean, you could take ill. You could have an accident in the gym or... Trip up on the way to a class, anything could happen, and they need to know how to deal with you. No, they don't. I can do my lessons here. I'll stay at home. You can't, love. Look, you know you can't. I can! Look, we're going to take you to the school tomorrow. There's no need to tell your friends, but well, I think the teachers need to know. <laughs> Look, your mother and I have made up our minds. It's for the best, Sarah. Today. Never mind, Sarah Lou. Just go find your PE kit. Well? Yep. The head can see us at lunchtime. Half twelve on the dot. So, do we take her or not? Yeah, I can't see why not. She'll have to face up to it sooner or later. Yeah, and the lad as well. We take them both. Yeah, yeah, I know. She can't expect us to bear all the responsibility, can she? Well, she'll find that out soon enough. Uh -huh. Morning, love. Morning. Um, did you mean what you said last night about going to see the head? Yeah, we're seeing her at lunchtime. But all of us? I can't face it. Well, I know it won't be easy, love, but I've got to do it. And do I still have to go to school this morning? No, no, I said that you won't be there till this afternoon. You didn't tell her what it was about, did you? No, I didn't. Well, if she asked me who it was, I'm not going to tell her. Well, you'll have to sooner or later, won't you? Why? Well, because one way or another, word's going to get out. It's bound to. Besides which? He's getting off scot-free. Yeah, he's as much to blame for this as you. Don't you think he ought to face up to it? We're a bit early. Oh, Mum, please, can we just go and wait inside? I really don't want to wait out here. Oh, will you tell him? Yeah. Oh, no. What's up? Oh, I don't believe it. Well, do you know him? That's him! Martin! What? That's him! It's him what? Him! Hey! What's your name, Sunshine? Martin! Don't. Excuse me. What's that last name there? Who, Neil? Yeah, Neil. Neil what? Neil Ferns. Neil Ferns, right. Well, I'll have a word with this Neil Ferns. Martin, come away! We're we'll seeing the headmaster in a couple of minutes, oh, no, aren't we? Not. We're going home. I've changed my mind. What? Now! So that was him. Neil Burns. Yeah, that was him. Do you like him? No, not really. I told you it's just the once. 
Well, what a mess. Yeah, well, I don't quite understand. First of all, you say we're going to go and see the head. Next thing you know, we're all back in the car on the way home yeah, again. Well, there are a few more things we need to think about. Oh, well, when you've decided, will you let me know, please? Yes, of course we will. Actually, I was talking to Mum, not you. Oh, well. Really? Now, listen here, young lady. This is your doing, not ours. You're the one that's landed this on us, so just give us a little bit of time to decide what to do for the best. And before you interrupt, that's for your best, not ours. Yeah, well, if I'm in the way, maybe I should go to my room. Now, that's not a bad oh, idea, is it? Shut up! <laughs> Carry on like this, we'll be daggers drawn before she's due. So, what about the head? I'll ring, I'll apologise. Right, and what we're going to tell her? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know anything. This just turns everything upside down. What does? Seeing him. That child. Yeah. It's not exactly how I'd imagined either. Well, I should hope it wasn't. Because any idea you had of him taking responsibilities for his actions or being a support to Sarah Lou... God, quite frankly, it's ludicrous. To agree with you now. I pictured him a bit older than that. Yeah. You thought he was some older boy who'd taken advantage of our little girl. So did I. Well, maybe it wasn't quite like that. There's no way he, Sarah Luke, can bring up a child. She don't want him involved anyway. She don't even like him. Exactly. So why tell him? Why tell anyone? We're all trying to hush it up. Well, I mean, there are legal implications. Like what? Well, what well, does the lad have a right to know? There are moral implications as well. Like, what good could it do? It can only do harm. How? Oh. The boy finds out, and then the parents. Before you know it, they're round here chucking the two pen thing. We don't know anything about the lad or his parents. Exactly. And that's the way it's got to stay. The more people know, the less say we have in the matter. So suppose Sarah has a change of heart and starts blobbing to the maze. Well, we've got to stop her. Then what are we going to do? Lock her in a room? Or take her to Canada? Oh, come on, Gail. We've had this out. It's a non-starter. It with no choice. <sighs> she hasn't even come to terms with having it yet. Yes, like I keep saying, she's going to have to sooner or later. Yes, and by then it'll be too late. Everyone around here will know it's hers and she'll be tied to it forever. She's too young to be a mother. It's not fair on her or the child. Everyone will think it's mine. I've made up my mind. I'm taking her to Canada before anybody finds out. Cheap flights to Canada before Easter. Oh, yeah. Like what? Children with babies go half price. I don't think it's a money issue, do you? Well, it is if I don't know what I'm going to be doing for an income this time next month. Yeah, I wonder if she realises her entire family life's going down the pan. All for the sake of one pathetic little fumble. Regardless of that, this business is going to take every last penny we've got. So we better start making some proper plans. I've got to start looking forward now, Martin, not back. Yeah, right over the edge of a big cliff. Losing your temper's not going to do any good. Well, the old thing's just knocking me sick, it is. Martin. Mum, I don't feel very well. Oh, what's up with you now? Pack it in, will you? Do you talk to people like that at work? I've been sick. Uh, well, you better stop at home then, hadn't you? No, I'll be all right in a minute. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sarah Lou. I spoke to Rita about you packing in your paper round. You didn't tell her, did you? I said you needed more time for your schoolwork. She was fine about it. Yeah. Someone else we've got to lie to on your behalf. If you're feeling better later on, we'll go into town and do a bit of shopping. You've done... Well, she's going to be needing some more clothes. Go back to bed for an hour, love. Um, have you had any more thoughts about Canada? Like what? Well, I'm still trying to get my head around it, but... Well, the more practical stuff, like uh, when, how much, that side of it. Change your tune? How come? Oh, it's not my tune. 
I mean, I can rant and rave all I want, but there's no point kicking against whatever's the most viable option. Even I'm not that daft. Martin, it has to be right. I don't see what choice we've got. It can work. I know it can. Right, well, we'd better start looking into how we're going to organise it then, haven't we? Can you get in the car? I'll be right with you. I'm glad you're thinking about Canada, Martin. Yeah, OK. I know Canada's the answer. Right. See you later, then. Thank you. Oh, Gail, <laughs> it's nice to see you out and about. How are you feeling? Well, I think I'm over the worst. Well, you, you look well enough. I, I tell you what, I'll be glad to have you back at work. <laughs> well, that's what I've come to see you about, Roy. Um, I've got a bit of trouble. It's a family problem. Oh, dear, I, I am sorry to hear that. Mm. So, um... Strictly between you and me. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, of course. It's Nick in Canada. He's, um, he's got some sort of a virus and I, I might have to go out there. I mean, when it's your own... Yeah, yes, well, you, you have to put him first, of course. <sighs> so, I might need more time off work. Well, I'll, I'll manage somehow. And I know Hayley's a tower of strength. Yes, yes Gail. How, how does Hayley seem to you lately? Does she seem fed up at all? You, you know, bored or anything? I haven't seen her with being off work, but uh, if she was fed up, Roy, I'm sure she'd let you know. Yeah, yes, I expect she will. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sarah. In a room. As usual. No, David. Oh, no, he said he was playing football after school, didn't he? I spoke to Stephen this afternoon in Canada. Oh, yeah. Said we'd be going over there if it was all right with him. He said any time. Huh. I told him we had a family problem. Would you believe he jumped to the conclusion that you and me were splitting up? Did he, then? <laughs> I put him straight. But I didn't tell him about Sarah Lou. I thought it'd wait till we got out there. And, um, I went to the travel agents. Priced up tickets for the three of us. Open returns. How much? Not much short of a thousand pounds. Still, we've got the rainy day money, and I can't think of a better way of spending it, can you? No, no, I think you're right about this Canada plan. I think you and the kids should go. Martin, I can't tell you how pleased I am to hear you say that. We have to be together on this. Mm. I suppose the next thing is to sit Sarah down and talk to her about it. See if we can get her to see the advantages. She will. She has to. I'm taking her to Canada, whether she likes it or not. So what's going on? I'm not so nervous. Your mother's come up with a plan. Designed to give you your life back. Not just me. Martin's in favour too. Yes, yeah, so what is it? And what do you mean, giving me my life back? When a girl your age has a baby... Her teenage years go out the window. She's tied to a house with a baby who needs changing and feeding and looking after 24 hours a day. I know all that, but it's too late now, isn't it, really? Um, gotta have it. Not if I have it for you. The idea is that before anybody else round here finds out you're pregnant, we go to Canada. Except me. I stay over here and earn a living. You, me and David, we go to Canada. And you have the baby. And then we come back. But it's mine. I'm the one who's given birth. We bring it up here. There's mine and Martin's. And you... You can get on with your life. Like it was before. So what do you think? That's David. Don't say anything. Hi, soldier. What's happened to you? You had a fight with Craig Smith. David! Not just him, those Macker and Liam Collins were saying things about Sarah Lou. About me? They were saying that you was having a baby. They was all saying it. Take it easy. So just what did they say, word for word? I told you. They said that Sarah Lou was having a baby. Is she really having a baby? Look, 
Who's this Craig Smith? Oh, Martin, does Is it matter? Is he in your class? He's Macca's cousin. He goes to Weatherfield camp. Is she having a baby? Oh, come on, let's sit down, son. Eh? Is she? David. He was calling her names. That's why I punched him. Yeah, you did right, son. Martin! Then the others started to do shouting things. And where was this? In the park? Yeah. Duh. You know, this is all we need. It doesn't matter, Liz. They're only children. Craig Smith's 14. Is she really having a baby? Everybody knows. We can't keep lying to him, Gail. <laughs> all right, just say what you like. Listen, son. Those lads shouldn't have <laughs> their big mouths. They had no business saying anything. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. We weren't going to tell you just yet, but, uh, yeah, Sarah's pregnant. Now, you know what that means, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so before long, in about three months, she's going to have a baby. A baby of her own. And Martin didn't. So how come everybody knows? I don't know. Tell any of your friends you might be pregnant. No, I didn't tell my friends. I only told Candice. Candice! She wouldn't say anything. Martin, she told Candice! You promised you wouldn't say anything! She promised me she wouldn't tell anyone! Oh, Candice promised, did she? Well, I think she broke that promise, don't you? There were only the three of us knew. We were going to keep it quiet. I'll kill that Candice! Well, Dr. Wilson knew and that. That was social work in you. You weren't going to keep it secret forever. We trusted you. It was my secret, not yours. Will you do anything right? Oh, Gail. The only reason you bothered is now you can't shove me off to Canada. You sell Lugo in Canada? Yeah. Do you want to put me where no one can see me? Who's going with her? Am I? No, sunshine. Oh, tell him the truth! Yeah, they were sending you there and all. Well, I've done it. No one's friends. going to Canada, okay? Oh, no, you're not going to Canada because you're staying here. Dad? No one is going to Canada, okay? All right, we thought about it. it. Seemed like a good idea at the time, but we might as well forget it now, haven't we? No. What do you mean, no? Oh, come on, Gail, this changes everything. Yes, it does. We all go. You as well. Oh. I can't see what the fuss is about. Nine o'clock in the morning, dear. Nine o'clock? Why? Well, because by then I think everyone will know about it. How? Well, you heard, David. This Craig Smith goes to Weatherfield Comp. He's not even in year eight, he's in year nine. So the whole school knows about it. It's one school. No, it's not. Let's say he's told his cousin in the juniors. That means Rosie and Sophie know about it. He shouted it across the Red Wreck. Half the kids in the district go there. They're only children. Yeah, but they'll go home and tell the mums and dads. I don't know what you're getting at. Of course you know what I'm getting at, Gail. The word's out. Rosie and Sophie are gonna tell Sally. The paper boys will tell Rita. Ken Barlow's only gonna bump into an ex-colleague of his. We might as well have a notice put on the door. Thirteen-year-old pregnant girl inquire within. So we face it. Well, what choice have we got? Oh, here he is. Feeling better now? No, not really. Come on, then. Tell us about it. I just don't want my friends talking about me behind my back. Well, I'm afraid they're gonna do. For the time being, anyway. And then they'll move on to another subject that... It's the way of the world. Martin, I only did it the once. I know. You were unlucky. She was naive. The fact is, Gail, she was both. Yeah. So why are we going to send me to Canada? Well, we thought it was for the best. You know, we were just trying to think of the easiest thing for you. You liked it in Canada. You said you wanted to stay when you were there before. But you were going to pretend that my baby was yours. Well, it was something we could do that didn't involve the school or social workers. We thought of one thing and then we thought of another. 
Look, the last thing we wanted to happen was this kids shouting out in the playground. Hurting you more? Upsetting you more? <sighs> I'm sorry. We're all sorry. It's happened. We'll get over it. I tell you one person that doesn't know about it. Who? Audrey. <sighs> I'll ring her. Tell her to come round. Oh, no. I've not been through enough for one night. I'll ring her tomorrow morning before she goes to work. Yeah. <sighs> before and half the street tells her about it. Feet at the summer, you know. I've not been this busy since Christmas. Yeah, well, you're here now. Actually, I have to say, I think someone's already let the cat out the back. What? Hi, darling. Well, Roy Cropper in the corner shop just now, and you know, normally I can't understand a word that man says, but <laughs> between us, I mean, Gwen and me, we've worked it out. Ma'am. So, um, well, I think I know already. No, ma'am, I don't think you do. Where's David? Uh, we sent him out with his pals. We just didn't want him around for. He knows about the birds and the bees, doesn't he, eh? So, are you thrilled, sweetheart? No. Oh, why not? Well, I'm right, aren't I? I've guessed it. There's going to be a new baby in the house. Yes. Oh, come on, you should be delighted, darling. I mean, your mum's not as old as she thinks she is. And I mean, Martin's no age at all. Audrey, Gail's not having a baby. Oh, isn't she? No. Well, what were Roy Cropper on about, then, your present family circumstances? He must have meant Nick. Oh. I uh, told him that to keep him quiet. Why? There's nothing wrong with Nick, no, is no, there? No, no, Nick's fine. But, but, why are you all looking so miserable? Mum, it's hard to tell you this. What? It's not me that's having a baby. It's Sarah Lou. In state, Charlotte. Uh, look, if, if she was pregnant, no one would let her have it. It's too late to do anything about it. Oh, Sarah. Please, Graham. Oh. What? Didn't you notice? I took her to the doctors. Gail, you're her mother. Didn't you know what she was doing? We knew nothing till it was too Do late. Shut up, will you? I don't want to talk to you. Look, we want what's best for Sarah Lou. This is the situation we find ourselves in. We have to deal with it. Deal with it? You have ruined your life. How could you do it? Don't turn on the girl now, Audrey. Oh, well, what have you done, eh? Flung your arms around her, told her she's wonderful. Look, she's upset enough without you screaming at her. We don't want to make a bad situation worse. Oh, how could it be any worse, you silly girl? Oh, oh, please! please. Silly oh. Leave her alone! I could slap her. Nobody slaps my children. Well, maybe you should have done. Just like my father belted the hell out of me. Like yourself. Hey. If anybody should understand, it's you. Well, at least I was 16 when I had Stephen. I mean, Lord knows I suffered enough for that. I wasn't sleeping around the age she is. I haven't been sleeping around. You don't get that way by holding hands, Sarah Louise. It's not like catching a cold. Oh, leave her alone, Audrey. What's done's done, oh, OK? Listen to you, right? What a wonderful father figure you've been, eh? I mean, you're as bad as each other. Have some sympathy for the girl. It is not sympathy she needs. Oh, I mean, who knows about all this? The oh. whole world, I suppose. Uh -huh. It's the council you're worried about. Well, yes, it is, actually. Because I have dragged myself up to be on that council, and now she is dragging me back down again. Your father should have belted you harder than he did. Oh, should he really? Yes. So what about the father of this child, then? I mean, what's he going to do? Who is he, anyway? It doesn't matter who he is. What do you mean, it doesn't matter? We're not interested, OK? Oh, I see. You don't know, is that it? So she's been sleeping with all sorts. Then... Oh. At least I knew who Stephen's father was and yours. Well, you never saw fit to tell me. Oh, Gail, that was years ago. We're talking about now. We're talking about Sarah Louise. What is she, the town tart? Oh, ma'am, just get out, will you? <laughs> so 
you don't believe in psychic. I've sent him to the Red Wreck. I can't think of anywhere else. I wonder what he's making of all this. God knows. My gran hates me. No, she doesn't. <sighs> I've never heard a tall like that before. She didn't know what she was saying. Oh, she did. No, she didn't. I said a lot of things I didn't mean. No, not like her, you didn't. Mind you, I could have said a lot more. You see, you lose your temper. You've no idea where it'll end. Sorry, I'm so sorry. We know who you are. Never mind. We'll get through, won't we? We're a family. We're strong. Yeah. So no matter what happens, we'll stick together. No matter what. That's what families are for. Wake up. <laughs> I'm not asleep. You all right? No, not really. Here, sip this. What do you reckon they're gonna say? I don't know. But whatever they say won't change anything, will it? So, mm. nothing to worry about. I really don't want to go. No, I know you don't. We'll, uh, we'll go see Mrs. Peyton and then we'll come back. We want to have the headmistress on our side, don't we? Don't think she'll make me dub, do you? Make you what? Dob, you know, um, tell you who the father is. I don't know. I don't think so. <sighs> you will be there, won't you? I'll be there. You all right then? No, not really. She's worried about what people will say. Uh. I've said it's only words. Words can't hurt, can they? Well, you're not the first young woman to sit there and tell me she's pregnant, and I don't suppose you'll be the last. The school will support whatever position you decide to take. So have you talked it over? Yeah, until the cows come on. And have you decided what you're going to do? Sarah Lou will be having the baby. And the father? Well, that's not an issue because, um, well, we don't want him involved. I see. Can I ask, is this a decision you've reached by yourselves, or have you been involved with any other agency? Well, a social work has been round, and we're in uh, close contact with our doctor. What about you, Sarah Lou? Do you think you'd like to talk to someone? There's an excellent young women's project I could refer you to. Um, well, if we could just keep it to ourselves. All right. If you change your mind, I'll be happy to set it up for you. Right. The practicalities. The first thing is to notify the rest of the staff. Um, is that necessary? Oh, yes. I'd better make you aware of our position, Mr. Platt. We will support Sarah Louise, but we don't condone what's happened. No, no, of course not. Therefore, we'll set out a discreet programme for her benefit. We're not sending out a message that encourages others to follow Sarah Lou's example. All teachers will be informed, and they will treat the matter with complete confidentiality. Then they can deal with any issues that may arise without calling undue attention to them. I'll also appoint a named woman member of staff will be Sarah Lou's first point of contact. She'll meet you each week and you can discuss any problems with her, all right? What about your form tutor, Mrs. Bonnage? Good. I'll see her later. So, you seem to be saying that uh, Sarah can stay at school? Oh, yes, if that's what she wants, for the time being, anyway. Time being? Well, the later stages will be more problematic. We're not equipped to deal with childbirth here. We're a school, not a maternity unit, and that's how I'm going to keep it. So, um, well, what about later on? Sarah Lou could transfer to a special unit that has facilities for her, or we could continue to oversee her education, set work for her, and she could be tutored at home. Hmm. And when it's all over? She can come back. Now, can I ask if 
Any other children here are aware of the situation? Sarah Lou's friend, Candy Stowe. I see. You realize that there'll be a lot of gossip, don't you? It'll die down eventually, but you'll need to be ready for it. Are you? Yeah. Good. Well, that's stage one over. Wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> I think you should return to school as soon as possible, Sarah Louise. There's no point in putting it off. What do you say? Thank goodness that's over. Mrs. Bonnet, she's very nice. Mm. Good idea, that, don't you think? Yeah, I thought so, yeah. All right. Come on. Off we go, then. Martin, please. I've been trying to get you all morning. You've not been in. Oh, don't worry, Audrey. We've not been sully in the name of Councillor Audrey Roberts. Would you just stop it, please? I am so sorry, sweetheart. No, I didn't mean any of those things I said. You know that, don't you? Well, you seemed fairly sure of them the other night. Yes, well, I was shocked, OK. Can we make up properly, please? Can I come in? Come on, Mum. They're only words. They don't mean anything, remember? OK. I'll just go and sort out Mrs Woodruff from under the dryer. For two minutes, all right? Well done, Sarah. That was really nice. Talk about how the mounds are children, eh? Sounds like they wanted to be helpful. Within reason. How do you mean? Well, they made it clear they didn't condone the circumstances. No, well, I don't suppose they do, but, uh, well, these things happen. You just have to get on with life. Oh, you've changed your tune. Yes, I'm well aware of that, Martin. <sighs> Look, I know I said some terrible things. <sighs> well, it's probably my age. My brain doesn't seem to take in things like it used to, but I was wrong, OK? I was very, very wrong, and I'm sorry. Please, I just want you to know that I will always be there for you all. Especially you, my darling. Sarah? Oh, lovely, what's up? Remnants. What do you mean? They blank me. <laughs> no one's ever going to talk to me again. <laughs> what did I say? Nothing. Well, the teachers were OK with her this morning. But the kids were a bit funny. Not nice funny. Sniggering behind her back. Oh, no. Oh, poor little thing. Are you going to sort this out? Come on, Sarah Lou, you're going to be late. You know, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe she's not ready to go back to school yet. Gail, this is exactly what she needs. A bit of routine again. Some normality. Mum, it's really tight and fat. You don't look fat as your baby growing. Yeah, it's a good sign. Means it's healthy. Oh, come on, you look fine. I feel sick. Yeah, well, it's just nerves. I don't know, maybe I should go back next week. Well, you know what Mrs Payton said? The longer you leave it, the tougher it'll be. Martin's right. And he's going to run you to school. We don't want you being tired before your lessons start, do we? No. Nope. And if you feel poorly or funny, you just ring me and I'll come and get you. Yeah. If anyone gives you any grief, just go to Mrs Bonnich. That's what she's there for. Right. Have you got your bag? And your lunch? Yeah. Then you're ready. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm ready. Listen up, girl. Ma'am? 
I just wondered if you'd heard how Sarah Louise was getting on at school. Well, uh, I asked her to phone me if there were any problems, so I suppose no news is good news. Right. Look, I know I've no right to ask after all the things I said, but uh, why didn't you tell me sooner? I mean, why did you keep it from me? We weren't keeping secrets, ma'am. Sarah Lou didn't know herself till she was five months gone. Oh, I know, five <laughs> months. I mean, the baby's father, no, I know... It... it was a lad in a class. That's all you need to know. Was it a boyfriend or what? No. Oh, nothing like that. It only happened the once. Once. One slip and your life's changed forever. Oh. Once is all it takes. Gail, I behaved terribly, I know that. But I meant what I said. I'm here for you. All of you. You know that, don't you? Even me, Martin and me have been through all the options. We've even discussed adoption. Adoption? Yeah, well, I'm not saying we'd do it, but we've talked about it. So, uh, how would you do that, then? What do you mean? Would you let Sarah Louise uh, see the baby before you took it away? I mean, would you let her hold it? Or would you just whisk it away and leave her with a lifetime of wondering? I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to bring it all back. No. Well, that's what it means. Every Christmas, every birthday, you know, you're looking for a card or a phone call that you know you're never going to get. I mean, searching the crowds, just in case you might get a glimpse of your little child's face. Oh, Mum, sorry. I didn't mean to be insensitive. I didn't realise. Oh, of course not. Come on, why should you? It's a long time ago. And, you know, perhaps my dad thought he were doing the right thing by making me give up Stephen. I mean, perhaps he thought he was saving me from all the gossip. All the stigma. But all he did was to take my baby away and leave me with, oh, Gail. The worst feeling you could imagine. Like he'd been hollowed out inside. I know you are doing the best for Sarah Rees, and I know that you love her. But, darling, nobody should part a mother from her child, whether they're 30 or 30. You know, I never realised how much it upset me, ma'am, to give Stephen away. Yeah, well, it's a big thing. Giving up your own flesh and blood. Some women never get over it. Well, it made me realise we'd no right to talk of taking Sarah Lou's baby away from her. Has to be her decision. Yeah, we already know that, Gail. Didn't sink in till today. So does that mean you've finally changed your mind about going to Canada? Yes. It was a stupid idea. I suppose I just wanted to run away from it all. No, yeah, well, it's understandable. It's human nature to leg it when the going gets tough. Doesn't change anything, though, does it? Whether we're in Canada or Weatherfield, Sarah Lou's still having a baby. Hiya. Just going to my room. Right. What are you doing here? Oh, Mum, it's all right. Well, it's not with me. I'll ring her mum, tell her to come and pick her up. No, Mum, honestly, it's fine now. We sorted it out. With. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I want a word. What is it? Sarah Lou is in a very difficult situation at the moment. She needs all the friends she can get. That's real friends. Not ones who gossip behind her back. I, I wasn't gossiping. So how come it's all around the school? Well, I was only trying to stick up for her because everyone said she was fat and everything. Honest Mrs Platt, I didn't mean to tell her. All right. I believe you. But if you ever let my daughter down again, that's the last time you'll set foot inside this house. Do you understand that? Yeah. 
Okay, off you go. Forgotten you've yes, got sir. antenatal this dinner time. No, I haven't forgotten. What lessons will you miss? Um, maths if I'm late back. Who's that, Mr Jones? Yeah, he goes mad if you're late. Well, I'm sure Mrs Payton's had a word. <laughs> Mum, they're not all as nice as her, you know. Why? Has anyone said anything? Oh, no. Um, they've all been really nice, but um, you can see some of them thinking. What? <sighs> I don't know. It's like they're sorry for me. Makes me feel like some kind of freak. I'm sure they don't think that. And what about your friends? How have they been? Oh, yeah, they're fine. They seem to be getting used to the idea. Off you go. I'll see you later. See you later. Well, why do you say you can't go on this course? I can't leave you for two weeks on your own. I don't see why. Why will you cope? I'm sure we'll manage. We're over the worst. I mean, if Sarah Lou had just had the baby, it might be different. Well, well that's the point. And if you think about it, it's come at a very good time. I'm going to need the extra money. Well, if you don't mind. Don't you want to do it? Well, yeah, of course I do. I want the promotion. Then do it. OK. Oh, well, then. Thanks, girl. What will it mean at work? You being in charge. More money. Nobody will talk to you because you're management. No. More money. More paperwork, more stress. Yeah, more money. <laughs> And your motive for taking this job is? I feel I can make a contribution. I can use my expertise to the benefit of Weatherfield General and his patients. <laughs> but I mean, you'll have to work out rotors, that sort of thing. No, oh, more money. Yeah, I'm serious. So am I. Well, will you be able to fix your shifts? More time at home. Oh, you're joking, are you? There'll be more covering for staff shortages, more unpaid overtime. More money. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. What's the matter? Nothing. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just don't feel very well. Do you need a doctor? No, Mum. Just leave it. Well, I won't leave it until you tell me why you've been crying. Has anybody said anything? Candice's mum. You what? She said that she didn't want me hanging about with Candice in case I gave her a reputation. You! Give Candice Stew a bad name. Oh, does she think she is talking to you like that? I don't care. Well, I do, so don't you worry about it. We're in the street. I'm sure people will look in. Well, I'll give them somewhere else to look at. Oh. I'm not having a talking to you like that. Oh, Mum, please don't say anything. If you hadn't have been going around with her precious daughter, you wouldn't be in this condition. It's nothing to do with yes, her. Yes, it is. Do you know, I don't know why you defend her. Oh, Mum, please. Just... Go lie down. I won't be long. Yeah, just... Yeah. I'm Sarah Louise's mother. All oh, right. Well, I've told her, I've told Candice, and now I'm telling you. I don't want her hanging around with my daughter. Why not? You know my daughter's a good girl. She's a bad influence. Open your eyes! You're Candice, I give jailbait a bad name. She dresses up like she's going on 20 and my 13. Girls grow up quick these days. And if you were any sort of a mother, you'd realise that. My daughter was a lovely girl until she started hanging around with her. It's your daughter who's in the club, lady, not mine. Didn't you ever think to tell her where babies come from? How to behave? How to say no? Well, you two, shut up. Everybody can hear you. We've got nothing to hide. So who's come round here shouting the odds? I brought my daughter up properly. The only regret I have is I didn't stop her seeing her months ago. If you I should be grateful that she took pity on her and stayed friends. No one else has been that daft. Sarah Louise is a good mate, and neither of you two can stop us being friends. You come home and tell me that you've got a bun in the oven as well, and you're out of this house, madam, and sharpish. Now I'm busy. Oh, oh. sent out. Never mind, Nick. You keep it. Bought. A large one. We've just heard. Oh. oh, it's dreadful. Sorry? We were all saying. You could bet money on it being one of them Battersby lasses. Not yours. What are you talking about? We're all surprised. Nay, shocked. Martin. Mum. 
just leave it. I was just showing a bit of sympathy. You'd thought she'd have known all about the birds and the bees, you being a nurse and all. Who's been talking? Well, everybody. Then everybody should mind their own business. Oh, Martin. Just ignore him. Well, I don't want people talking. It's got nothing to do with them. Well, if they come in here drinking the night away, it's no wonder they don't know what their kiddie gets up to. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Must be a bit of a shaker for you. Yeah, it is, Janice. It's a real shaker. So just keep out of it, will you? The lot of you! OK! Right. Come on, girl. Come. I wonder if it's a family thing. I mean, Audrey was what we used to call a gym slip mum, wasn't oh, she? Oh, for goodness sake! Gail Martin, I need to have a word. You told her. No, I didn't, I didn't. No, not really. It was all just a misunderstanding. At least we don't misunderstand the difference between right and wrong. Oh, yes and no. I didn't mean it, Martin, really. Oh, no, it's OK. At least we don't have to worry now about what people are going to say. And thanks, everyone, for being so understanding. I really appreciate it. Right. Come on, Audrey. Let's go before someone says something we'll all regret. I'm sure we can well, manage, it's Gail. Not that. Just listen a minute, will you? Sarah Louise is pregnant. You're serious, aren't you? Well, it wouldn't be much of a joke, would it? As far as we know, she went with one boy once and made a mistake. I'm not making excuses for her. I'm just telling you before someone else does. What, uh, <clears throat> what, 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 what's going to happen? What usually happens in these cases, she's six months gone, so we've got to get used to the idea. I shan't say anything, obviously, Gail. You shouldn't worry about it, Roy. Everyone else will. going around trying to do damage limitation, is there? Whole street knows by now. How's she coping with it? Better than me and Martin, by the looks of it. I don't know whether to throw my arms around her or slap her. What am I supposed to do, Sal? I wish I knew, Gail. It's... It's so hard. You know, I'll do whatever I can. Thanks. You know, I only found out by taking her to the doctor because I thought she had an eating disorder. She didn't know herself, and she was five months gone. Some parent me, eh? Who'd have thought that, though, Gail? I mean, come on. She's not much older than my two. I mean, they're just... Babies. I know. To the living group. Hiya. You all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I better go. I assume you're not the only one that's come into the living room. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. How long have you had that? Oh, uh, just a day or two, and um, the hospital were giving them out. Um, Alison Webster talked to Sarah today. Because huh? you know they're both due about the same time. Are they? Yeah. yeah. It'd be nice if she could persuade her to open up a bit, wouldn't it? Because she's not been saying much to me, is she to you? No, not much. The hospital might have provided that phone, but who's paying for it? <laughs> no, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Shouldn't let your dad see you playing with that. It's for work. Emma Jones has got one like this. Well, easy to use. Even you could work it. Oh, thanks a bunch. Uh Thank you. I was playing with that. No, well, it's not a plaything. Yes, why did they put games on it then? <sighs> How do I get rid of this now? I just press the button, the C button. Hmm. I've got the address book now. Yeah, we'll just, I'll just give it here. No, I'll do it, okay. 
Right, I've done it. Now, just leave this alone, will you? This is for the hospital, OK? Can I have one? No! No! Oh, why not? Everyone at school's got them. Yeah, well, just think. It'll make you special if you haven't got one. Oh, what about when the baby's due? I need one then. Oh, yeah, cos the uh, human race was on the verge of extinction before the invention of mobile phones. Yeah, so forget it. We can't afford it. I thought you'd want me to have one. Yeah, well, we'll think about that when the time gets closer, eh? Hey, I wonder if there's anything in here about that body they dug up in Victoria Street. Martin, I've not had my breakfast yet. Come on, Linda! Yeah, yeah. She said it hurts. You all right? It felt funny. Funny how? I don't know, like something moved. Here? Like a little kick? The baby kicked. <laughs> That's a relief. I thought she was going to have it in here then. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. It's perfectly normal. I mean, I've felt flutters before, but I have never felt anything like that. Mm, it's been cooped up in there for months. It's stretching its legs. Saying hello. <laughs> Did it again? <laughs> I felt it. Can I have a go? Look yeah, here. Oh, just my luck. It'll probably be having a kit now. <laughs> Did you feel it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels well creepy. Doesn't it feel weird, though? Not now I know what it is. It's not creepy. It's perfectly normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we didn't laugh. No, of course I didn't. <laughs> I wish you could have seen her face, though. Yeah. Well, she coped pretty well, then. Yeah. She did. I remember when I was pregnant with David, he was a big kicker. Still is. <laughs> and he used to do most of his kicking in the middle of the night. It was like having a noisy lodger who kept on sociable hours. No, oh, I remember. Hope Sarah's baby's a bit more considerate. She's gonna need a sleep. We're doing all right, aren't we? Yeah, I reckon. You know, if there's some good that's come out of this, it's uh, brought our family back together again. If we can cope with this, we can cope with anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't... You can still have a laugh. Doing what? Grease, the stage manager, can't she? Yeah, of course you can. I know. I'm not bothered. Oh? So why the long face? Look, none of the kids are even going to bother. You'll be run off your feet. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing much running. Well, it's organisation, isn't it? You'll be in charge of props and costumes. I mean, no-one can go on stage unless you say so. Yeah, you'll hold the whole thing together. Yeah, cos I'm the most important person there. Come on. Do you want to go to the shop? Yeah, all right. OK, see, see you later. See you, love. Morning. All right, and ring me as soon as you arrive. I will. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, Martin. Ah. Rebecca. Hi. Hello, oh. Keel. What a surprise. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's nice to see you. I didn't know you shopped here. Oh, I've just come out for something special for tea, you know, with Martin being away. Yeah. So, how's life with you? Oh, fine, you know, same as ever. Have you been? Well, we've had a lot of trouble with Sarah Louise, but um, I suppose you've heard about that. Yeah, yeah, I did hear. I'm sorry. Well, I've come to terms with it. At least um, I'm not in shock anymore. Yeah. I've accepted it. Well, she's very young. Oh, when I think how young, I could scream. Anyway, um, where are you going? Oh, no way special, just back to the nurse's home. Have you time for a coffee? I haven't really. I'd like to thank you for taking care of Martin. Things really got to him and uh, I know you took the strain at work. Well, we're mates. I know he's grateful to you. Well, he's no need to be. I don't suppose he said. He keeps a lot of things to himself. Yeah. Well, if you've not got time now, why don't you come to the house later? We could have a drink. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm meeting a friend. Someone special? Well, yeah. I mean, no, he's just... Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to pry. Have a nice evening. Yeah. 
And uh, when Martin rings tonight, I'll uh, I'll tell him I'm in. Yeah, do that. Tell him not to work too hard. Oh, no point. He always does. Terrible business. Didn't Maxine used to go out with him? I believe she did at one time. What Natalie must be going through. Still, it puts everything else in perspective. It does. Right, ladies. <coughs> the coast is now clear. The salon is now a rodent-free zone. You have my personal guarantee. Yeah, OK. What do I owe you? Well, by rights, it should be the full hundred, since I caught him twice. But I'm not a greedy man, so I'll settle for the fifty. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Yes. Looking for Mrs Platt? You found her. What can I do for you? Mr Ferns. My son, Neil, is, I believe, acquainted with your daughter. Yes. I wonder if I might have a word. Lad's not been himself lately. His mother's been worried, so I tackled him. But I don't quite see... I gather your daughter's pregnant, Mrs Platt. Our Neil reckons it's his. He's only 13 and not a confident boy. But that's what he says. I see. So what do you say? Well, like you say, he's 13. If he's fathered a child, I think we need to talk about it. The truth, Mrs Platt. That's all I'm after. So how far gone is she? About six months. She's having the baby then, it's too late. Yes. So is it, my lads? This is a very difficult situation, Mr Ferns. Either it was our Neil or it wasn't. You must know your own daughter, the type of girl she is. Well, she's not the type to sleep around, if that's what you're implying. I'm implying nothing. I just want a straight answer. I've got two daughters myself. If one of them fell pregnant at 13, I'd want to know what happened. I could tell no, you. It happened because two daft kids didn't know what they were doing. I see no point in recriminations. Arneel's telling the truth, then. It was him. At least we know where we stand. But like you say, they're both very young and... Oh, do don't you worry, Mrs Platt. I'm not a man to shirk my responsibilities. If your daughter is having my son's child, I intend to do the right thing and stand by them. My wife and I will play our part. Right, Gwen, man. I had a visitor today. Neil Fern's dad. Today one? to do the right thing. Oh, you don't mean Neil's been gobbing off to his dad, do you? Um, I don't think it was quite like that. <sighs> so what does this mean, then? More people with questions. I am sick to death of having to explain myself. You don't have to talk to anybody. You don't want to. Yeah, but Mum, it's nothing to do with anyone else. It's my baby. I know. Can you imagine it? Being stuck with Neil Ferns for the rest of my life. Can you imagine Neil Ferns' mum and dad sticking their oar in when the baby's born? Oh. No way, I've got enough interfering relatives of my own. Well, I think I managed to persuade Mr Ferns that it might be better if Neil didn't get involved at all. Is that all right? Yeah. He seems to me that some old boy... Somebody's left a car for you. Let's see. What is it? It's a Mother's Day card. For you. Who's it from? Doesn't say. What a nasty trick. Be that Kirsten. Is it her handwriting? Well, this is going in the bin, where it belongs. Just don't let it upset you, all right? I'm not. Nobody with a shred of decency would do a thing like that. It's cruel and it's vicious. I bet her mum doesn't know. Just ignore it, I would. Look, I'm not upset, OK? So what is it today? You'll be glad of it this time next year, I'll tell you. Oh, don't say that. Oh, you wait. Looking after a baby's a full-time job, and it doesn't stop there. You never really get shot of your kids until they leave home. You think I'm joking, don't you? No. It's not going to be that bad for me, is it? Oh? What's different about you? Well, you'll be doing most of it, won't you? Me? Yeah, bringing it up and that. What gives you that idea? Well, I'm only 13. I won't know what to do. Then you'll have to learn. 
Did you really think I'd be doing it all for you? I think you and me better have a little chat. I'd be bringing it up while you carried on as normal. Well, not completely. But somewhat like that. Well, I've still got to go to school, remember? I've still got to go to work. Well, can't you give up work? And where's our money coming from? Well, Martin works. Do you really think I'd be going out to work if his wage was enough? We have this standard of living because we've both got jobs. Yeah, but Martin's just got promoted. Yes, and it's just as well with a baby on the way. Have you any idea how much they cost? Yeah, well, the government, they help, don't they? You mean child benefit? Well, that doesn't go very far. You've seen Gary Mallet struggling to make ends meet. And there are thousands like him. I don't... We're the lucky ones. I don't want to give up school. You won't have to. But I can't go to school and look after the baby. <sighs> oh, well. We'll sort some it out. Yeah, but if you're still working. Well, I'll have to have some more time off, won't I? I think we should start thinking about that, how it's going to work. Because you're going to be tired, aren't you? Looking after a baby and doing your own work. <sighs> I thought this was the hard bit. I thought that... Um, once... Your problems really start. There's no two ways about it, Sarah Lou. This is the biggest upheaval you've ever had in your life. I'll do all I can to help, but you'll have to take the brunt. Life's never going to be the same again. And you might as well get used to the idea. Good day at school? Yeah, it was all right. Was it Kirsten who sent that car? Well, she never said out. Anyway, I won't give her the satisfaction of asking. Come on, Sarah. Let's have a little talk here. Mm, what about this time? I've told you. Whatever's ahead, you're not going to have to give up on school. I know it's not going to be easy when the baby arrives, but we'll manage somehow. Mum, I'm sorry, I just can't see it. I mean, I can't take a baby to school. No, I suppose not. But there are other girls in your situation, and like Mrs Payton said, there are special units for girls who are still at school who have babies. You can look after your baby and carry on with your classes. Mum, I don't want to go to a special unit. I'm not a freak. No, I know you're not. And I don't want you to go anywhere that makes you feel like one. But I think we should look, Sarah. I don't want you to give up on your future. It's the baby's future as well, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Mum, I'm scared. Whatever I do, it's not about me anymore. No. And being pregnant is scary. Especially the first time. No matter how old you are. Are you scared? Yes. But excited as well. And a couple of months ago, when I thought I might be pregnant again... Really? <laughs> I was more terrified than ever. Yeah, but you weren't still at school when you were pregnant with me, were you? No. But you'll have some that I wouldn't have had. If a mom who loves you to take care of you. You've got a good father, a brother, and a grandma. We're all here for you, Sarah Lou. All of us. Thanks, Jean. Are you still at it? I can't believe you didn't come to bed last night. Uh, well, I had this to finish, didn't I? But you only got off the course yesterday. You must be exhausted. Oh, I'm all right. I had a bit of a kip on the sofa. Well, why don't I make us all some breakfast, eh? You must be ready for some home cooking after all that canteen I'm stuff. sorry, I haven't got time for that. Well, of course you've got time. It's Sunday. Well, I still don't make any difference. I've still got to go. Where? To work. You're surely not going in today. I've got to, Gail. There's a lot to sort out before I officially start. There's a lot to organise, you know. But you've been away for two weeks. The kids will have forgotten what you look like. Yeah, and this promotion's a big chance for me. I don't want to stuff it up. You don't get a second chance at this kind of thing, you know. Okay. What time will you finish? 
I'm only going in for a few hours. Well, I'll make us all a dinner with the kids, eh? And then we can spend a bit of time together. What, well, today? Well, of course today. You've got nothing else planned, have you? No, no. Right. I'll see you later, then. Kids will be made up. OK. Martin. I'm glad you're back. I missed you. Oh, this looks nice. What is it? Moroccan lamb casserole. Got recipe out of the paper. Oh, you've gone all exotic in my absence. <laughs> Very good. Sarah, David, tea's on the table. Oh, you'll have to shout louder than that. Why? They're at my mam's. You are? Well, she said she'd have them so that we could spend a bit of time together. Gail, I thought this was supposed to be a family meal. That's the whole point. I came home. Oh, so what are you saying? It's all right to rush home for the kids, but not for me. No. No, I'm not saying that at all. Oh. Well, that's what it sounds well, like. Well, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to see him, that's all. Well, there's always tomorrow. I just wanted you all to myself. Is that so bad? No. No, of course it's not. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to overreact. I expect you're tired. Yeah. Don't you like it? No, I'm just not hungry. Look, I think I'm just going to go and have a lie down. OK. I'll come with you. No, no, to be honest, I... I just want a bit of a kip. Things are just catching up on me. All right. I'll settle for a cup. There's no easy way. thousands. You'll be an expert seamstress by the time you get through that lot. What, me? Uh, dead right. You don't think I'm doing all this by myself, do you? I'll, um, put the kettle on. It's a good skill to have, you know, in sewing. You never know when it's going to come in handy. Yeah, what for? Letting my waistbands out. Earning yourself a living, for one thing. And I bet you'd love to see that baby dressed in something you've made yourself. Of course you would. I know I would. Yeah, but I want it to look nice, though, don't I? I mean, if I made anything, they'd all be saying, oh, look, she put that poor little baby in a cushion cover. Don't be so daft. It'd be best dressed baby in Weatherfield. You'd have its own designer, Mum. It's only practice once you get started. Would you show me? Well, once we've got this stuff out at road, if you want. Well, as long as we don't have to do pink for a girl, blue for a boy. No, that's old-fashioned these days. <laughs> Any road, come on. We'll get now done sitting here. All right, let's start clearing this table, then. The bank, it's please. round. You know, that's the first time I've heard her talk about the baby like that. Well, I've got that excited about it. She probably thinks she might as well be an all. <laughs> <laughs> I am up for anything, me, you know. Shopping trips, decorating nurseries. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. 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 How are you doing? Hiya. Hiya. Your Sarah Louise is going into competition with Mr Baldwin. <laughs> you all right, Will? Yeah. Is there enough hot water for a bath? I'm shattered. Yeah, I'm sure there is. You had another rough day? Yeah. What other kind is there? I'll put your tea on. You see, it's all right. Full English breakfast, extra beans, white toast and a big mug of tea, please. Yeah, a mug of tea for me as well. Is it your birthday again? Oh, no, better than that. I passed my test. Yeah, driving test. Oh, I thought you meant his cycling proficiency. <laughs> hey, you could go in for that. You get a badge. Yeah, they could sort on your overalls. <laughs> uh -huh. He's always kidding me, you know, but he'll have to take me serious from now on. Oh, why? Well, I won't just be doing the dirty jobs anymore, will I? I'll be going out picking customers' cars up. I'll be in the works van. I'm mobile now. No, you're not. Not until I put you on the works insurance. I thought you'd have done that this morning. I haven't had time to turn around. Oh, we'll do it this afternoon, then. Well, if you behave yourself, I might... I'll have one of those breakfasts as well, please. Can I interest you in our lunch of the day? The healthy option? No. You still look a bit glum. I'm all right. It's just Candice was supposed to be meeting me in here, but she's not turned up. Can't you go around to her house? No, my mum doesn't really like me going round. Oh. Listen there, I bought this for you over there. What is it? It's just a book about having a baby. I just thought it might help explain things, set your mind at rest. Well, thank you. It... It's just that um, I get loads of stuff like this from the clinic. They give me a new booklet every time I go. Mm. This is supposed to be very straightforward. What, written for kids, is it? <laughs> I suppose so. Well, thanks, I'll have a look. It's just that... I know. I'd rather be reading a magazine. I don't want to tell. Hasn't said much. She just sits there reading. Yeah. 
What's she doing? School work? Hello? Hello? Yeah, who is it? Some woman. Okay. Can I have a Nichols cake, Mum? Hello? I've got something to tell you about Jerry. Oh. Yeah, all right. We'll discuss the implications later. When? Yeah, I'm on my way in. Bye. We want wheels with style. What's your book? Uh, it's about having a baby. Haley gave me it. Had your nose in it a long time. Yeah, well, I like the pictures. You didn't read the book I gave you. Yeah, well, that was rubbish. Anyway, the diagrams are missing more sense. Well, if there's anything you don't understand, you can always ask me. Yeah, I know we can. Or Martin. Between the pair of us, we're pretty clued up. Yeah. <laughs> you know... It's very nice of Haley to take an interest, but... But what? Well, she can't have children of her own, and I don't want her to... To what? Nothing. She's not as gay. Whenever I try to help, she just doesn't want to know. Can't get away quick enough. Well, maybe she's more embarrassed in front of you. So, why isn't she embarrassed in front of Haley? I don't know. It's just one of those things. I've bought her books, Martin. I've discussed things with Dr Wilson and the people at the clinic. And I'm the one who's determined to do what's best for her. Yeah, and she understands that. So why is she blanking me? She's not blanking you. What does Haley Cropper know about being a mother? <laughs> Nothing, but I thought you were pleased she was taking an interest. I was, at first. But given the situation, the whole thing's become unhealthy. Gail, you're overreacting. Haley's got problems Sarah can't begin to understand. You know, she's not going to involve her in all that, no, is she? Well, she's not going to get the chance. I don't care how kind and friendly she's been. From now on, she can keep her distance. <laughs> oh, what? Or I'll be round there to tell her. Hi, right, Gail, I'm off. Oh, um, by the way, how's Sarah Louise today? She's fine. Oh, of course. I think she's been very brave. Actually, um, I wanted to talk to you about Sarah Louise. You've been seeing a lot of her lately. Oh, well, yeah. I thought she might just need someone to talk to. You know. She's got me and Martin to talk to. Oh, of course, yeah, Gail. I wouldn't mean that. It's just that um, she's very vulnerable at the moment, and I wouldn't want anybody to say anything that might upset her. I wouldn't. Not intentionally. I see. Well, then, um, if that's how you feel, you needn't worry. Best be off. Hey, Ellie. All right. Oh, what's up with her? I tried to tell her to ease up on Sarah Lou. Oh, right. Do you not think Sarah needs all the friends she can get just now? She needs her family more. I'm just not comfortable with Haley's interest in her. Right. I thought we'd been through all this. It's because Haley can't have children. And I just don't think it's healthy for either of them. Yeah. Well, Haley's only trying to help. Well, it's not helping me, seeing them talking all the time. Well, just because Sarah started getting friendly with Haley doesn't mean she's shutting you out, you know. When the time comes, it's you she'll want holding her hand. No one else. You think I'm being silly? Well, maybe a little bit overprotective. Maybe a little bit jealous, right? Baldwin's contract. We stand to make a lot more money than we do oh, now. Oh, 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 Could I have a word? In private, please. Yeah, well, the Is it about Sarah Lou? Yeah, but it's more about me. Apologising for this morning. I didn't mean to imply that you were sticking your nose in. I was being overprotective and I'm sorry. Oh, not at all. Gail, it must be so difficult for you. It's so stressful at the moment, everything that's going on. That's no reason for hurting the feelings of a friend. Mine and Sarah Lou's. I don't think I'll go for that. Oh, I thought I might find you here. Andy's? Yeah. Had a nice break? No, not really. I haven't done anything. Oh, well, you'd be glad to get back to school and your mates then. You miss that, won't you, Sarah? 
You know she's finished now till after the baby's born. Mum, she knows. I've already told her. Not that she'll be missing out on her studies, because she's going to be doing that at home. Yeah, I suppose so. Hey, there's no suppose about it. We'll be here to make sure you keep up with it. I'm going to take as much time off work as I can. And Martin's going to fix his shifts the best he can. So you won't be left on your own. Right. I'm going into town. Is there anything you want? Yeah, I need body. The one I've got feels off. Oh, cheer her up, Candice. Cheer up, Sally. <laughs>